Welcome back, CDL fans. It's the final Saturday before Major 2, and we've got three key matches coming your way. First up, Carolina faces off against Vegas. It's a must-win matchup for both teams as they try to snag a spot in the winner's bracket in Miami. But honestly, it's the old-time matchup, Playster versus Attach for me. Next, Miami Heretics are trying to build momentum going into their home Major next week. But the Minnesota Rocker could play spoiler if they get their act together. And we round out your set Saturday with Toronto Ultra versus the LA Thieves. The defending Major One champions were humbled in their last couple games, and the Thieves smell blood. It's all coming up right now on the Call of Duty League. Oh my God. Nasty and this has been a masterclass by the Thieves. What a brilliant moment for the newcomer on this Boston Breed squad. I don't have a clue as to how he's Forward, crip guns the pair of them as the thieves are absolutely eating gorillas alive. Oh, those are big shots. Oh, Kremp is still going too. The extra damage is there. In the meantime, it's the B zone. Nasty back to his home. Nasty, by the way, oh watch the flank for the squad. Bottom blue. Oh my oh. god, yeah. Oh my god, LA thieves. That is unbelievable. We've never seen that before. They captured both zones at the same time. It was poetry in motion. The thieves have just run high rise control in that final round like we have never seen before. No, that's not your opponents in ranked last night. That's the LA thieves capping both points against LAG, something we don't see too often at the pro level. Welcome back in, everybody. Chris Puckett alongside Rosalie, a.k.a. Alley Cat. We got nameless at the end, but Alley, I want to start with you in LA thieves. You've been a believer. Even when they're at the very bottom of the power rankings, you thought there was potential in this roster. They're starting to show it here in stage two. Absolutely. I think for them, it's just been a lot of these heads up plays and these very high pressure situations. We literally saw it in that clip as we started the pre-show and the fact that Nasty went on that A site while Kremp was locking down B to end up winning the series. Nameless, their only two losses, Optic and Atlanta. LA Thieves are taking care of business. Let's take a look at some of the highlights and break down what is going right out there in Los Angeles. Yeah, there's a lot of things going right. One, Ghosty has been extremely consistent. I mean, one of the most consistent players we've had all year, honestly. It's been great throughout the stage. And what's been going right for them is they're getting people stepping up on all fronts. I mean, Afro this stage and respawn so much better, particularly in their last match. And that's what led to three respawn wins. And then in Search and Destroy, that has been like their flagship mode. Five and three in that game mode. But Afro once again and Nasty both have been unbelievable in Search and Destroy. Top ten players. Absolutely. And on the on the team level, it's been the attacking as well in Search and Destroy and Control. They have probably, if I looked at the nitty Agree in the stats. LAV is probably one of the strongest search and destroy defense teams right now, as well as on control. And the reason they're finding success in these series is not only that consistency, but also consistently clutching up when it comes to the attack. We've seen it in multiple search and destroys. We saw it yesterday on high rise in that round four for that attack. They have been extremely heads up in these situations. Absolutely. They're also number one in opening duels throughout this split. And that's wild when you think about like how wow. good New York and yeah. Atlanta have been in that particular stat line. So LAV, they have a lot going right in their camp right now sitting at four and two with some flagship wins over what people would consider top six top eight teams in Vegas and Minnesota LA thieves on a heater as of late could somehow finish with a five and two record if they're able to find another win against Toronto Ultra today and if they did so that would boost the thieves up into a top four seed wow. heading into Miami that's a big matchup but you also see they're right there at number six right behind Vegas Legion who are also sitting at four and two yeah, and Vegas Le Legion, they've just been amazing, man. I, I love what we've seen out of them bringing in Geo. Vegas Legion have a huge opportunity today versus Carolina. Very big opportunity, but I will say for the Vegas Legion, if there's anything that they need to work on, it needs to be that search and destroy. They have been a disgusting hard point team, but as we head into the major, for them to break into that top six, maybe even top four conversation if we're getting a little reachy, it has to be in the search and destroy. They haven't been a very strong attack team, and they're struggling to make those in-game changes in the middle of some of these maps when it comes to those game two and five. Nate, I'm looking at the numbers here. You lost to Toronto one to three. Uh -huh. You lost to LA Thieves, which was a surprise one to three, but uh -huh. then you beat up by 
on LAG, Miami, Minnesota, and Surge. Is today's matchup against Carolina easier, or do you think this should be Vegas, and can the driver's seat once again? I feel like Vegas probably looks at this matchup, and they're like very similar to our recent matches. We should come in here and take care of work. I mean, they're pretty consistent all three game modes, Chris. And, you know, Ali is talking about our reach. I'm going to reach here a little bit as well. Okay. They ever, they, if you look at the stats, I mean, across control and hard point, they're 11 and 6. That puts them as a quote unquote top four respawn team if we're looking at stats. And, you know, versus the field, like we've seen what they can do. I mean, they've been working on their map pool. It's pretty deep. Attach has been top five in all three game modes. After la la or yesterday's match, he's actually top three in hard point. Like, he has been unbelievable for this roster. They were world champions together on Denial Esports back in advance. Warfare today, they're on opposite sides of the Warfare Attach versus Clayster, an AR duel that we're definitely looking forward to today. Yeah, unfortunately, if this graphic was made during split number one, those numbers would have been a little bit closer. Clay and fellow the errors in this team in Carolina Royal Ravens have been struggling a little bit compared to the start of this season. Both of them rocking right now a .83 and a .87 compared to a previous .94 and .91. And that's what's going to have them struggle moving forward into Major 2 because they're not keeping up with the slaying as the rest of these top teams. I feel like the Ravens have such like a high, very high ceiling. Very I high could ceiling. see them making a run and getting a top four if they were starting winners, get a little bit of good fortune because they have the players to do so. But they have such a low floor. Like yes. we've seen them. They were in a great spot. I mean, you're talking, you know, or their series count. They go up against Miami, a match served them on a silver platter, and they fumble it. And honestly, Fellow needs to be better. I mean, when they brought him in in the last split, he was playing great. They were winning a lot of respawns. A lot of their hard points were very close, but now it's just not been the case. That's their worst game mode, the one that was saving them. The one man who is trying to lead this team to victory is consistently dropping numbers. He leads the league in hard point damage per 10 minutes, and he's doing that with an SMG. Top three in control as well. He's a respawn god right now. Absolutely. You're trying to make a case for Rookie of the Year against Linz right now, and with that, they need Carolina Royal Ravens to get some wins if he wants to be a part of that conversation. Speaking of Linz, he's playing for Minnesota Rocker this season, and the Frenchman has been putting in work despite all of his efforts they've dropped four game fives nameless minnesota may be the least clutch team in stage two listen they went to four game fives right chris but like it's so bizarre they're one and five in map one and they're zero and four on map five right so like to start an end series they just have to be so much better i mean they got three players point sevens in search and destroy and honestly like it's the game fives they're falling apart they're losing 0616 in their game five s and d's you know this is a team that a lot of people had a lot of high hopes for coming into this stage. Stage, but I think a lot of people forget that there was a huge change in terms of spawns and from stage one to stage two is a completely different game and they haven't been able to figure it out just yet. We're still waiting on a big wake to turn into the superstar that he once was. Uh, and it's really just been like clutch plays from accuracy to get them through some of these maps and Lynn's make taking over. So for Minnesota, it's like you got to start all over again, man. You got to build your confidence back. And they saw that versus Seattle, but they would take two steps back if they lost today versus Heretics. Yeah, and unfortunately, though, in that map one, too, they've been struggling. One and four, I believe now that is one and five after their match versus Seattle. And they've had a tough schedule, to be fair. They've had to play top three of our top four seeds in Atlanta, Optic, and Toronto. And two of those went to game five. So they started out really strong. The issue is, is when they start playing down to their competition in the Boston, in the LADs, and especially against almost a Seattle surge where they were able to pull out that win in a game number four. They have to win against Miami Heretics if they want to change. A win keeps their hopes alive. But let's talk about their opponents because the Heretics are in a similar position after beating Carolina 3-1, they're also sitting at 1-5. This is your final fight against Minnesota, your 8-16 map count. Chances aren't good if you make it into the winner's bracket, but you're at least hoping to come in with a ninth seed, maybe? Yeah, yeah, and... You know, that would honestly be a win for them, right? Like, coming in, winning your last two matches, getting some confidence set into this next tournament. I mean, we saw it happen. Like, winner's bracket ain't everything. They were in winner's bracket. They got double bopped, kicked out of the sure. tournament. So, a slow burning process of, like, trying to improve and get better and make a run out of tournament, I mean, I, I would admire it. I mean, we saw their hard point. It's been solid. Five and five, their top six in that game mode. They've been able to beat a team like Atlanta Phase and HP. So, you favor them there. It's been the S&D and the control. It has to get better. They're last in the league in season two opening duels. 
first bloods with this type of roster, you should be able to get it. And then on control, they're 12th in defense. A big fall. Like, they were good at control. One of the better control teams in yeah. split one. Miami is a very confusing situation right now. They were on a seven series loss spree. They get that insane W against Carolina. And now it's like, are they back? Are they transferring scrims? Like, oh, this series is so hard to predict. I do have to say, when they're winning, the vibes are high. And we hope to see them with smiles on their face. Eric, boom, everybody loves them. Let's see him on stage in Miami. You, of course, can catch his interviews live at the Major 2 Tournament presented by Gamergy. It's going down in Florida next weekend. Scan that QR code. Bring your friends. It's going to be a party. It is going to be a party. Bring your sunscreen. Wear some cool clothes because it's going to be a lot warmer than we've had to experience up here in the north. Nameless, it's the final week of qualifiers. And today we got three more battles, including that Monster Energy matchup, Miami versus Minnesota at 430. But which of these three games has potential to go to a game five? I think the first one right out the gates is a oh, heater, yeah. man. Like if Carolina lose that, immediately we're just looking at them like a bottom four team and they, they can't make winners. So massive game for, for both these teams. Honestly. Chad, get your bets in now. Are you taking Vegas or are you taking Carolina? It's Clayster and crew taking on attaching the finest from Vegas after this. your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store check out all the awesome in-game rewards you can earn for free just by watching the call of duty league what's on tap this weekend an all-new lineup including a weapon blueprint emblem calling card stickers and xp tokens just link your youtube account now to start earning Just God mode attach right now. Attach right over the top of the car. Oh, 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 Seven in a row for him. Vegas Legion clutch up. Three to zero. It's 
time to party. You are fighting for your life in the winner's bracket if you're the Carolina Royal Ravens, but you got to battle through a 4-2 and two Las Vegas Legion. The best we've seen from Vegas, I feel like, in any of their stages. Let's start with the squad and what's going on with this team. What have we seen from them recently? We've seen a really strong respawn team, specifically in those hard points. The search and destroy has been a little bit wonky, but when it comes to this matchup, it works in their favor. Here's a look at their roster name. Let's walk me through it. Is yeah. there a MVP on the lineup currently? Uh, yeah, you got to go attach. I, I think he's the MVP. I mean, he's a veteran on this roster, and he's sort of got them to another level. I mean, he's been performing at, as, like, one of the best players in the game throughout this But Honestly, like yeah. I said, top five all three game modes. But I said it in the pre-show, when a team follows the game script and they all buy into, like, how they want to play the game strategically, you take turns going off. That's a sign of a very good team. And we've seen that with every single match, a different player leaving their mark on it. Like, first of all, early it was Nero taking over. And then we saw Geo getting involved in the last series, attack consistently so Vegas it's going great in their camp from the Monster Energy pregame they're going for the record tied most qualifier wins in franchise history this stage four wins and major four qualifiers but we have a couple extra matches does now. Vegas so keep the opportunity. does Vegas keep it rolling right here Allie I think they keep it rolling to be honest like I said their hard point has been incredible they're first overall in the league right now in hold and then second when it comes to brace like Ann said earlier might be pushing it but they are top four at least statistically when it comes to hard point and I'm really interested when it comes to maps to modes of the series though because Kona Royal Ravens have been finding some success to search destroy, and I think that control is going to be very important, and it's not going to be invasion, which is a big red flag for Las Vegas, because their last three wins have been on a control with two losses on high rise, which forces a Karachi in the series. Do we get a game five, fam? I, mean, I think we do. We, we absolutely could for Vegas. You know, the, the three maps in the middle of, of this, they haven't played this split yet, right? So, either trying some things or just how the vetoes fall, it could get real interesting. Last time I went with Carolina, they lost to Miami. So today I'm going back to the old faithful attach in Las Vegas Legion. I think this is going to be a really, really close matchup. Even after seeing those maps, I think I'm still going to stay on Vegas Legion. Vegas Legion, nameless, we going to make it three for three? Listen, I'm picking one my heart, not my mind. Today I'm going with Carolina. Woo! I feel like they're going to win this one. We're catching up, fans. Do you agree? Yes, they do. All right, it's time to find out. Is Carolina making their way into the winner's bracket? We got Maven and Merck on the mic. Thank you, Big Sexy. Uh, all right, so you heard them kind of talking about uh, what we want to discuss in the sense of we saw the maps. We were kind of thinking this looks like Las Vegas are trying some things. Yeah, I mean, they're four and two. Uh, they're in the winner's bracket. You're going to play a top four team. Even if you go five and two and you take a four seed, it, like the fifth seed's going to be a top four team. So I think this is just them testing the map pool in the middle. They need some more maps, right? When you're a team, you're starting to get circled a little bit. Teams yeah. are going to prep a little bit harder. You know the vetoes. You're going to veto your best match. Yeah, it's so like it's winner, gonna happen. win or lose for them, it's like not the end of the world. Whereas on the mm -hmm. other side, like you are battling right now if you were Carolina, trying to get into the winner's bracket. Now, if you take a loss here, are there some ways that you may be able to get in? Sure. But you win, you are in. Let's see if they can do it. I don't think it picks like that crazy when you think about it like that. If you're trying some maps, if you're Legion, you're going hard in the paint if you're Royal Ravens. Listen, they got to come in hungry. We'll see if they can do it. I mean, Legion was in yesterday, so I, I mean, they played some great Call of Duty. I, I just think this Legion true, team's true. trying to get better and better. Uh, I mean, we heard the listening, how they were playing those respawns. I think they are just kind of locked in right now. They're loving the squad. The chem is there. And as Ant said, Ooh. they are having moments. Is uh, There's going to be three dead in some nice time for Legion. Yeah, no, they really have. And that's sort of what we talked about yesterday. When you have that consistent effort and attach, Sometimes it's like you want other guy to go off, one guy to have the big moments, and it's been any of the other three just having those incredible moments as Clayster does come through with two on the feed, four Royal Ravens, a couple seconds left, and we get ready to rotate over. It's going to be attached, lurking, just tucked in the corner. Almost comes away with a fellow able to snap. Yeah, I mean, he hits the first one. He's hoping for a little bit of a lunge there on the second melee, but doesn't connect. Fe fellow able to get away from it, so there is the first. Play is going to find this second, so a nice break opportunity here for Carolina, but Geo locking it down. Trophy on. You do have, who is that, Purse staying alive all the way in the back, but he is taking down. So Carolina, for now, just want to put enough pressure to get them off the hill, and they're able to do it. Yeah, I mean, when we last casted him, like, yesterday, there's so many moments where Purge, you know, he's last alive, needs to get a kill or two, or slow something out, and he's able to. But the guy that really needed to get, like, those big multi-kills that was insane yesterday, Geo. He was a freak. The guy was on one. No, he was. Yeah. I, I, doing it with the sub, doing it with the AR. Big series for him. He's been consistent, but 
Not always the pop-off moments we were seeing yesterday. Yeah, just those big multi-kills, just doubles, triples, just coming out to have these big swing moments. We'll see if he can have another day like that. But I think you're right. Like, they're just playing with a lot of confidence. Like, things are starting to click after they make the move in Gageo on this team. I don't know. It's just like you, what you're doing is working. You just want to keep perfecting that going into the major. Yeah, and that's it, right? So now they're going to try to find some new maps. But over towards, the, you know, this P3, it's a good job from Giotti. Went off the hill, kind of break this up. You see where Carolina's spawning all the way out towards Palace. TJ, TJ, the last man alive up towards Gas. Oh, I thought he was going to find one, but not going to happen. A huge break there for Legion. Yeah, I thought with the rival there, maybe able to do it. But Geo able to take that fight. It'll be another hard point straight together now for Vegas Legion. They look to get the advantage. As Geo put in damage for the back tank, sets it up for attach. Fellow trying to snap at the car now, coming into the fray for Vegas Legion. You go up 50 now. You're looking to get the rest of this scrap. We'll see if Carolina can start to swing it back. Well, and this is what Vegas did so well yesterday in the hard points was these breaks at these money hills. They just did not allow Surge to get back into the game. And even just a, a hill like that, I know it is very early, but you needed a response from Carolina. Now you're down near 70 points early. We know how important sort of that P3 is. But there is the break, and then you get a good amount of time from Legion. Yeah, those hard points yesterday just like just had the advantage or ahead and able to hold on to it. Not like those crazy swings like we've seen in a lot of these series for the most part. Handling business, playing well with the lead. We'll see if they can continue to do it here. For now, this central hard point doing a good job just keeping people out of it. It's nearly 20 seconds was already off the point. Now trying to get into it will be Royal Ravens, but making it difficult with Attach. Is Attach getting two? Update and four. The guy's been a rock. Yeah, Gwyn right now just trying to stay alive. His three teammates, they spun up all the way Palace. Gwyn, he's going to have to try to make a play, maybe to help them get out for P5. And, well, he's going to do that. So he's going to find a double. But the spawn's safe right now for Legion. So they're going to rotate over towards P5. But Carolina, no, they're going to try to go quickly. But that is going to be shut down as Purge playing his life. Ugh. Finally traded out. But it's just TJ now, the furthest man forward for Carolina. Gwen so close to making that play, just too many bodies for Vegas. And then Gwen gets rewarded with a palace spawn. So he's got spawns out so deep after nearly making the heroic play. But now we get ready for next. You've sort of booked this up. The top street got near the point. Now you've got a three on three here at the point. Lining up in front of them will be Purge. Purge able to get the kills. One more he's trying to dance with. Gonna make it two more. Able to snap. The headshot comes through clean. Fellow gets ripped in. That's another one of those moments Purge has had. He's been big for them, man. And again, they don't rush to the hill. They spawn up back parking lot. Uh, you had one player and Fellow get a kill on the flank to try to pinch. But there's nobody really on it, right? They're taking their time, controlling blue, controlling DVD. Then they find those kills. Now they are on the point. We've seen that with Invasion kind of playing around map control first. And well, that's going to turn into some time and through this first set of rotations. What we talked about yesterday, just that 80 point lead for Legion. And well, Legion, the listening so good yesterday. Let's go to a listening with Vegas. Can you give me a freezer? I'm talking on time, yeah. I'll, I'll see I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking over you, Don. Hang on, hang on. I think David. Quinn hurt on the right. P1 tank, right side. Right, right, right. Contest from ACD. Contest from ACD. Right. Nice. Back right forward. Back right forward. Yeah, yeah, one shot. 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 Time, he's weak at time and one's doing things. Take your time, cap. Take your time, cap. Yeah, waiting. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help me out, Tom. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah
you take on you, close take on you. I'm watching you 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 take on you. I
Yeah, it's what, eight and four now for them. The hard point's been clicking. You saw like the holding and breaking stats. I mean, all around, they've just been good. Solid, yeah, just <laughs> yeah. good. Like, not necessarily like blowing everybody out of the water or looking like the best hard point team in the game, but do they look like they can take a hard point off of a top team? Maybe be that dark horse? 100%. Yeah, and again, you're getting it from all four players. So yeah, obviously you're, someone's gonna have some insane numbers, but everyone's within 500 damage of one another on this map number one. On the other side, it just felt like you start a little bit too slow, right? There were a couple yeah. opportunities. That P3, I think just right off that first rotation, set the pace for Vegas Legion, how they wanted to control the map. Near that second set, Carolina, got going a bit, but it was just too late. I mean, how often have we seen that this year where it's just like, you know, you have like strong side spawns or whatever the case may be, whatever the map may be, it's P2, like you give up that time and try to set up for P3 and then you get broke and it's like, okay, we're down 100. It, we see it so much. I mean, obviously it's real common, like a skid row or something like that, but it can happen anywhere. <laughs> like you just try to set up, one break comes through and you're like, wow, we are in a hole. Yeah, you spawn palace and you're like, yeah. This is oh, tough. God. Yeah, you gotta run <laughs> very far uh, across the map. But now this is where it gets interesting. Again, Vegas, obviously the position that they're in, these next three maps. I mean, you haven't played this all year in high rise SD. They're literally 0 0 on the year. They have, and then the other two. So it's the middle of the series, right? The middle yeah. three, where it's. Karachi like, Control, you, you haven't played this stage. Skid Row, Hardpoint, you haven't played this stage. So like, if there's an opening for Carolina, it's right now. Yeah, and like what? The, the high rise hasn't uh, necessarily been great for Legion, right? The Control's really been the invasion that's been solid for them. So, like, would you love to get a Karachi that's maybe looking a bit better? Like. Looking better, but we have to see in this stage. Like something that you might be able to take and pull out as a wild card, maybe at the major. Um, anything you can grab. I mean, and listen, we, it's so weird to talk about this stuff because we know they're like screaming this, you know, day and night. Like they're playing this stuff every day. We talk about them not playing it at all. We're just talking about obviously here in like the live CDL matches. They obviously have a ton of reps on it, but like it's just different. I mean, for players talking about it, uh, just going from scrims to. To matches. The how many pace, how many times have different. we heard a player say that? When's a team that's struggling? If we can just replicate what we're doing in scrims. Well, yeah, I mean, some teams are playing to win scrims. scrims, and other teams are testing to, to pra practice, yeah, right? Yeah. Trying things out. But again, just looking at the maps and modes here. Start off with Invasion Harpoon over to High Rise SD next. And it's, I mean, it could be as simple as, you know, I feel like when you're a team like this, especially, like, I know a lot when we're talking about the, you know, like the top four squads, it's like, yeah, man, they get like one more search or one more hard point. Like, they might, they might win the tournament. Like, it's really just like one more map. Like, why not? But like, when you're a team like this, it's like kind of up and coming in Legion and like really starting to become a threat. Same thing. Like, one could be the difference between making a deep run and not having what it takes to get top spots. Yeah, I mean, I just take a look at like Miami stage one. It was just like, sure, Vasians were coming through. Not really, and then they started getting taken away, and the yeah. struggle started to happen. So, Vegas know this. They're going to start to be looked at. Their VOD, their records on on every single map, and that's going to get taken away from them at the major. Well, let's take a look at some of our search and destroy stats here for the major two qualifiers. We're so close to heading to Miami. I think Joe and I head out Tuesday. Can't wait to get there. But this is how the search and destroy is looking for these squads. And Joe, as you were going through stuff, what were your thoughts? Yeah, and, and, you know, we talk about map pool. I think S and D. This is uh, you know another one where they're definitely going to want to get better. But you look at that those bottom two stats. I mean, the first, first in the league in conversion rate. So when they're getting first bloods, they are winning 80, almost 87% of their rounds. So can they find a little bit, maybe more of that? Because that is, uh, that's number one. Um, and if you're uh, Royal Ravens, can you find any, any, any of that? Because you're 12th. Yeah, I mean, this was kind of the issue, right? With Carolina, and we saw them getting better through major one, but it feels like that sort of honeymoon period is going away. A lot was on, well, their search is getting a bit better. But you can see in the stats wise, it still still needs some work. So like, I listen, not all first bloods are the same, you know, um, or opening duels. Like not not every that's what that's conversion same. rates. But when it's like when you're 12, like, is this something where like you're getting a kill and it's just you're not decisive enough beyond, behind that or taking a risk? I mean, it's probably a combination of all of it. Yeah, I think it's just like little challenge, like kind of the second step of the map after we have this first blood. Where do we want to go? How do we want to execute? Because anyone can come up with like an opening, you know, here's our route, so the break. Here's what I'm doing. If it's after that, <laughs> yeah, then it gets hard. Yeah, and how you want to play certain situations. It's talking about those first bloods. Maybe you want coming right up right now, first with that rival. There's going to be the first. Has TJ nearby with a rival of his own, but first blood and finesses his way. So great job by Persh. Well, okay. 
it happens sometimes. Joe uh, curse him a little bit there, but no, he gets the first blood. He'll drop, and now you're going to see if they can still get that uh, incredible conversion rate that they have. You put it back into a 3-2 favor quickly. It's a nice trade. This felony was the one that was able to take out Purge. So you're efficient there if you are Vegas Legion. Now, TJ, maybe the guy trying to make the play. We'll see what the timing will be like or if it's going to be picked up. He's got one to his right, one to his left. Decisions to make. Going to take out the first, maybe grab an MCW, and now he can snap. I, I was see, You were seeing exactly what he was going for, but maybe you try to get around the corner and stay alive a little bit longer, but nearly able to turn and burn. Yeah, he's not thinking there's two in their base. The reason there's two in their base is because you have attached all the way across the map, just kind of saying, hey, I will help pinch based on the numbers. Pretty much play off of me, play your life. And there we go, there's the info from Attach, hits the slide and he is out, round done. 1-0 to Legion. You know, it's funny, I was thinking he like knew there was another because he just kept looking over there the entire time. I thought he got a comm or something. This way he kept looking left, kept looking left, but... And then like the instant MCW and snap, I was like, ooh. Catching it midair. Yeah, that would have been, been sick, but uh, not quite able to do it. So you continue strong on your uh, first blood conversion rate if you are Vegas Legion. Purge finds the opener. Fellow swiftly with a kill onto him, but then you take numbers again if you're Vegas Legion, and you kind of keep that the route. So great job there. TJ, chance to disrupt, but not quite able to do it. Now, into round two. We'll see if Royal Ravens can bring it back. Offense over to Legion as they're working up this A side. And on the other side, you're going to have two players working B side. There is a quick trade. So that was TJ and Gwyn working in tandem. So three on three. And that's one of those where it's like, who's the first fly? <laughs> Basically, somebody drops the same instant, right? Yeah, and then Purge Ooh. from down low. But nice shots from Fella with the Renetti. Is Gwyn's going to find one? So he's in a one on two. This is a nice read. Throws the stun out. And it looks like Nero's just pushing this. And he's above him. Off the rafters. What a play from Nero. Climbs on up. A great balance. Absolutely. As he runs across the top. Little ballerina. Look at this. Some sort of gymnast. Look at him go, though. That was almost real, real awkward. Yeah, he guessed the wrong corner. Yeah. And that, dude, I was about to say, like, I thought I thought Persia's, like, centering and, like, restap was really clean. I <laughs> When you go fell out a pistol, I was like, okay, that, that, that was probably real nuts from his end, too. Because I thought Purge almost beautiful double there, but just uh, comes up a bullet short. But now up 2 0. I think technically you got the first blood there in attack, I think, before he was instant traded. So. So it counts. Yep, keep that conversion <laughs> right up. <laughs> the in Carolina just kind of back to his default. Two players down low. Nero going to give that calm. Just watching that cross. And Purge, just based on the timing, he was thinking about jumping, thinking about waiting. Almost gets caught and does get caught. That's trying to find the trade, but TJ known for being a very quick climb on the ladder. And where, you know, you've if you're Carolina Royal Ravens, you're last in that conversion rate. Well, you get the first blood. Now you're in a two versus two. We'll see if they can close out the round, but not looking good. Geo able to get a pick. Going to be all on Fellow now, looking to clutch. We'll see if he can get kind of two one-on-ones here. He's got a little time to work with. 35 seconds, not stressing yet, but Bomb obviously in a tough spot. Yeah, Bomb's on. I think the best thing for him is they have no clue where he is. He's not into a spot. That plus run. the time that you can actually make get her out. Oh, and there we go. He's just going to run by Geo, but Geo turns around. So, uh, again, the timing's kind of working out for Fellow, but the time on the clock is not. He's got 10 seconds, five to plant. Snaps. And again, Attach is trying to waste time, and I think he has done it again. Saw it in round one. Bomb cannot be planted. Geo actually checks it. He actually checks if he was on it. But there we go, Vegas up 3-0. I mean, a fellow did a whole lap of the map. It's like, where are these guys at? He's able to win that, but God, I mean, that was just kind of frustrating to watch. <laughs> he literally did a lap of like, the entire map. You know, I think the one, two, I think we were on board with Clay when he had taken down that two on two. I don't know if he had a call it or what, but it looked like he was looking up towards the helipad, but I think Geo like jumped behind him or something. So sometimes Tommy's on this map can be tough. Yeah, it's high rise in a nutshell. Gwen, rival in hand, just lurking by B. TJ kind of here with it, just holding the angle. 
You can see Geo, I mean, they got a trophy all the way back, kind of in their window. They're thinking maybe somebody's gonna get aggressive here. Hold and take this gunfight. Peeking it for info. Yeah, TJ just ready, waiting, lurking, getting some damage in. But now the gig is up, and that position's not gonna work for now. Got a gunfight down low. Some nice damage in from Fell, but good job just backing down. It's gonna be tough to get a clean kill, and finally it's Quinn on the site. Oh, that trophy. That would have hit Nero, but a nice heads up play from TJ and Quinn. The double chalice on point out of Carolina this round. Nice defense over towards B. Yeah, I mean, Gwen just having that rival in these close quarter combat scenarios. Picking up kills. Geo can't quite keep the tracking on. Gwen's able to get two in the round. And Royal Ravens, you finally get on the board. Just a nice tight setup. And as you said, Fellow. He was kind of, we see Nero do it, watching that cross from down low. From the Vegas side on defense, he's just playing the, the info down low. Able to back your way in some nice kills from him in the round. And we saw him snapping a bit. Yeah, yeah, he had a couple good snaps and like a couple situations that maybe you kind of ego chow in that moment, but I thought it was just a good job, like just getting down, staying yeah, especially up. Especially MCW, right? You're just thinking gunfight. Yeah. Well, oh. especially like I mean, he snapped on someone's forehead in the second one, but still gets out of harm's way because knows. I mean, he gets traded instantly, even if he wins that. I think they had what numbers at that point. Plays it well, so three in a row for him, two for Gwen. A much needed round. Yeah, but this has kind of been the same standard setup here. How is it going to be a little bit different? TJ's going to run into a nade, so there's some info for Purge. And there is a first blood. Geo from the helipad stairs. With how quick, or well, how slowly they just haven't really been working up towards B. <laughs> They've allowed some positions to go the way of Vegas, but a nice trade from Fellow. It's just like once your positions give it up, sometimes this map is just he, he just like plays so scared for a little bit. It's just 100%. Any peak someone could be holding from somewhere. <laughs> like Nate hits you now, you're like, okay, now what do I do? But uh, TJ able to wrap back out and get bomb planted now to the three versus three. Interesting spot here for Gwyn. Has to be careful. That's an explosive barrel. Nice to Purge though. Some great shots. Able to find the headshot with the rival. Almost gets a second, Ooh. but he starts the trades. And now it's down to TJ. And one on two. He gets picked apart. It comes down to the retake. Legion able to get it. And yeah, what Purge, like in the 3v3, gets that open First kill. One. I know you were impressed by that. Well, yeah, I mean, he almost found another one. So. Yeah. Just buys enough time for his teammates to get there. And then everyone's position's known due to him. So just Purge just leading the way. It's kind of like a first blood in its own. But here we can see TJ just like maybe trying to catch a timing with the rival. Knows he's going to have to finesse. But this has been all Legion. They dominate the hard point. In control here in the search and destroy. They have slowly started to, you know, not crack into that top four, but se find some separation. Like, it sort of felt like the top four and everybody else for a while there. And now with the run from Thieves, the run from Legion, starting to, I don't know. Feel like middle of the pack, yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's a different tier now. <laughs> Another first blood over to Legion. Nero gets it. TJ trades it. Now three versus three. Geo pounces from top heli. Puts numbers in their favor once again, be able to get to these 3v2s more often than not. And then just doing a good job of not throwing away their lives. I think maybe he spotted TJ there. Yeah, looks like he's ready for it. And there we go. Nice shots from TJ, but <laughs> kind of had to back away, shooting the barrels. Attached, though, just going to work up, plant this bomb. Again, yeah, just sort of a give and take on this map. Legion know exactly how they want to execute. Wing trying to hit the player on the bomb. Not going to happen. And then they pounce on that immediately. No hesitation. Geo gets on it quickly. Some shots in, but TJ is in trouble. Another round to Vegas Legion and comfortable again. Yeah, if you look at the one round Carolina's won, it was that tight setup over towards B where you're kind of team shooting, they're trading quickly. I feel like outside of that, it's kind of just been they're, they're getting picked apart. It feels like that just maybe just some of their, their comms deep into these rounds are a little bit off, not challenging together. Well, yeah, I mean, it's... I would think just at the, I mean, what do we used to joke about back in Jetpack, like COD, like search? If you're not a good search team, play four, four. four hit yeah. something like four. It's not the same, but like it's a little bit easier when you're in a tight setup. 100%, yeah. Just from the comp standpoint. You remember those like LG four man hits? Like, yep. oh gosh, shout out Sam LaRue and Nikki D. Oh, Titans. 
<laughs> able to take one out, but still you get the numbers again into the 3v2 if you are Legion. Some information there if you're TJ, but the information comes in the way of bullets and Nero takes him out. Quickly, Bellow last alive and he is dropped. It's a 6-1 victory. Legion making a statement, continue to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. First time they have played high rise and it is a 6-1. It's fr frustrations continue to grow here for Carolina. Clay, he gets up, maybe go for a walk, take a couple of deep breaths. They're gonna have to refocus on this Karachi control because right now Vegas running away with this. And one. wasn't that, you remember back to like, the first time I think we saw Carolina Royal Ravens play here was when they, the first time I can remember was when they played Optic, right? It was like a 6-1 or whatever it was. Remember like when fell off the map and all that, and we were like, maybe they've got another map here. Since we've seen them play that since then, not really the case. Yeah, I mean, just look at these non-traded kills here from Vegas, and this is just what I'm talking about. You, you have this many non-traded where you're getting these first bloods. There's nothing, no response really from Carolina. That's that's what it turns into is, yeah, Clay 0-5 on the map. I mean, outside of Clay, I mean, he had a rough one, obviously, but like you look at the damage and kills and like it doesn't look like that much of a disparity, really. Like it doesn't really look like a 6-1 no. if you just like take Clay off the board. I know it's a silly thing to say, but like the damage is there, like the kills are there for the rest. Like it just doesn't look as lopsided as it was, but there were about 1-1-1, one, one one, but like outside of that. It was pretty lopsided. Yeah. Just they had the right reads and yeah, those first bloods with numbers. Legion looks very comfortable. And again, two, three, five in this series. It's first time we're seeing it. Uh, two, three, four. In, two through four. Sorry, two nope. through four. First time we're seeing it in uh, official matches here for Legion. And so far, so good. Maybe you've added another one into your backpack as you get ready to go into the major. But uh, we're getting ready to head to break. Uh, this will be a series that's 2-0 right now. You've got all the control in the world as we get ready for a Karachi control. It seemed uh, a couple weeks ago, it was the top four and everybody else. Legion making a statement so far, botting the Royal Ravens. We'll see if they can close it out in efficient 3-0 fashion. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back. We continue on here uh, with a very one-sided match so far. But listen, what this is all for is headed to Miami here for Major 2. And honestly, things have gotten more interesting over these past couple of weeks just with the surge you've had from Thebes, from Vegas Legion, some teams that maybe can make a run. Heretics have got uh, a tough road ahead of them with this Major. Well, they have, yeah, but make sure you scan the QR code, get your get your tickets now, see us there. Yeah. Have a great time. The, sure the weather's going to be beautiful, and you get to watch some great cod. Yeah, listen, yeah, if you're living in some state, you're still getting snow. Go on a stuff. spring break. It's a late winter, yeah, come over to Miami, get a little, a little sweaty, enjoy some sun, get a little tan, eat some food. Yeah, that's what you do. Yep, okay. Well, <laughs> back to Legion versus Royal Ravens here. Uh, you know, Clay got to be frustrated after that last one. Um, you know, he uh, he drops a goose egg in the map too, kind of steps away right away. I mean, for all I know, he's had to sprint to the bathroom, but more more, more often than not after a map like that, probably is frustrated, need to take a breath. I think you can see on all their faces some frustration. Well, you know, you and I were talking about this uh, you know, sort of uh, in the break, and I, I kind of asked you, I'm like, listen, when we thought it was uh, – you know, honeymoon period or a good team in Carolina. Remember, it was just like the hard point was clicking. The other two weren't. And I sort of said to you, like, is it different with Legion? You're like, I think they are a good team. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, you've been seeing it brewing up. But taking a look at the Monster Energy free game here for Carolina Royal Ravens. Control map pool concerns. Yeah, three and two on high rise. Uh, throughout major two qualifiers, what, your own one on invasion. Have not seen it yet here on Karachi. So they had some work to do. And again, for Vegas Legion on the other side, we have not seen them in this qualifier qualifier play this control so again testing yeah. that map pool for the major yeah every time i say we've uh, never seen them i'm talking about this qualifier this uh, roster <laughs> yeah, yeah basically yeah this roster which is uh the big thing but it's crazy because you think about these two franchises last time they faced off what it was that crazy reverse sweep like all the way back in week one or two whatever it was like one of our first insane matches how much has changed since then just on these two rosters as we get to the action here on a yeah, trying to at least get one tick done, but a nice retake. Now they got to be worried about that B push. You see a couple players spawn up. And well, near junk, they're going to go maybe for a transition play over towards B with TJ and Gwyn in that area. Clay just going to get on the point, work the objective on A. But I like this play from TJ, just kind of staying alive, finding that free kill. I love that he just spawned up. He just went right to the corner, just in the dumpster wall. I'm like, whoever that is, I'm just staring at the minimap. Whoever's going over that is going to be pissed off because that's always a tough death. What was that? I mean, jumping in the top red hits the mantle and the shots. Demon. Again, bit of a retake here for Vegas. So you get him off of A. They didn't fully commit towards B. Like, maybe I thought they were going to. With that first kill, did Carolina. So now they kind of have to retake and play for this map control. How many lives do you throw away maybe in the process of trying to just finish off this save point? So far, it looks like it'll be relatively efficient. There you're able to finish it off. Now you get the extra minute to work with. Minute 40 to go on the clock. Trying to get set up or into their setup is Paris Legion. Go in there with the trade. Maybe a second fight on to attach, but he's just lurking for now. They're going to take out Nero as well. So you've got a couple of kills. Just get a little bit of map position here. It's always the big thing with attacking this point, trying to get this close red spawn. But you do have one player kind of blocking it right now. It will be Purge. So you see them hunting him, but he's able to find the double. And that will slow things down. Look at the difference where you're spawning now all the way back, Coop. You do have two, TJ again in this corner. I'm sure they're going to try to find him as quickly as possible, and they do just that. Just another what, one of those nice little moments from Purge. Yeah. Just... I mean, was it, were they a big threat in that moment? No, but if you lose red side control, you never know how things might unravel. Just gets a double. Now, now we're just 45 seconds off the clock, right? There was a minute 30. He's on four in a row now, too. Make it fine. Nope. Nice little slide there from TJ. Kind of gets underneath him. Yeah, that time it doesn't go his way. The first time it does, but he has Geo here. Attach, reinforcing over towards this bus. Able to catch Clay. Sprinting on over. And very staggered here from Carolina. You just got to get control of junk. Not able to do so. Maybe ignore that player. Looks like that's going to be the call. 17 seconds left. It is desperation time. Clay able to get involved, get his second one in this. How often, I mean, how many times have we seen it where it's like a little slow for him in a series, then he kind of erupts and things start to shift. A tough search and destroy. He had one kill until a moment ago. 
I think they need him to come alive. They need Clay Roaring if they're going to come back in this series. Well, Gwyn's giving them a shot. It looked like they were going to deal with him on the point much quicker. But they took their time, did Vegas Legion, and there we go. They don't give up a tick at B. Four lives remaining, five seconds to go. You finally get the close red spawns, but you don't have any spawns left as Vegas locked it down. Yeah, no, that's a perfect way to put it. Yeah, finally got what you're looking for, just uh, too late. A guy's chatting through it. Clay, so many times we've seen him just erupt in a series when he's struggling, but it's just got, I mean, when you have, I, he had, what, uh, zero in the search, he had like two there. I mean, when you've got, like, that's the past like 20 minutes, you've got two kills. It's just, it's it's tough to like, a lot of times it's been for him, I feel like it's this crazy triple, like a, a play, like a moment. He's just like, all right, I'm locked. He needs one of those. Yeah, like starting on defense, right? Like where you're kind of defending B, you can yeah. find a multi-kill. Yeah. yeah, you go to an offensive round where some timings aren't going your way. Offense, I mean, offense and A control. Like yeah, it could be a blender. But I'm just waiting to see if maybe maybe there's something comes to life a little bit here and they start to bring it back, or is this just going to be a 3 0 slammage? Because the guy that's still alive and well is Papa Purge, 10 and 5, 3 in a row. Yeah, TJ, though, does he want a big flank? So able to get Purge might be my favorite point. player. I love him. You love him? I love him, dude. Okay. No, we were gassing him up a lot in the green room. Dude. The talent or big fans? Guy, guy like, I don't even know he had a KG, a KD that registered on the KD barometer in some of those series, and now this guy is still here and just improving day by day. I love it. Guy's a warrior. He sure is. It's, well, he's up to 11 now, and his team's starting to work towards A. But Carolina have done a pretty good job keeping them off this, but I think the second tick will come in right here and maybe the rest of the points. So now the focus will probably be on B. And we'll see if they can develop a push maybe a little bit sooner <laughs> even if it's not like kind of that red setup can you just get well that'll help. it's a little bit messy can you get some pressure on towards b before there's 30 seconds left in the round i mean it's looking like there already might be a little success but his purge tries to get the guy kind of ahead of the rest of his teammates so he'll get back to the spawn they'll wait for him and now they'll set up their next push the four hours starting to collapse here from royal ravens but you're already able to take out one narrow snapping and nearly winning one top red now you have number four and two in Persia Geo trying to win this fight over towards Red. You got a two on two here for a moment. TJ, fellow, the vets able to hold. And yeah, I imagine Purge is going to switch that smoke up, make sure he's got a stun out. Probably still uh, edited from his S&D class. So he throws that out. Yeah, it's more, I don't think he was expecting that, but he goes to toss it. No. It, it happens, it happens. I think you, I think you just saw him smile. Yeah. <laughs> right now, yeah, you can see they're trying to retake junk control and able to do so as they find those kills and now they're able to get the transition kill clay was trying to get into a spot so it's just fellow right now over towards b but you get the close red spawn that's what they were fighting for and here we go vegas can now start this attack and tj stun hits this doesn't connect he gets him sprinting forward you pick up another kill and now Clay, okay, Clay gets a nice little moment there where he's able to get two and sort of slow that threat that's a you know you're in sort of a two versus three you maybe don't have numbers and he's brought it now to 7 and 13. 30 seconds to go, though. Two kills through and attach in Geo. Looking for some big play time now. Perch able to get one. The snap back is there, but not going to get the kill. Attached, yeah, though. Dead, though. Able to bring it home. Everybody is dropping. Dumpster side spawns and coming through. Off to the races from Red as well. This could be the dagger here if you're Legion. Yeah, they were trading well, Carolina. They were. And then the last two just get taken down. They lose their one-on-ones. And now you're going to have three, four players on B just like that. That is how quickly these rounds can collapse on Karachi when you have those close red spawns. And Legion did it. They were layering the map, trying to get to that spot. It looked like it was going Carolina's way. But Legion clutch up. Yeah, and honestly, like, there wasn't... It was probably around like 30 seconds when he got the chances like starting to come through for Carolina. It's just, yeah, it's like the, the control moments we talk about for the years. Just inst it's just three, four down and bang, you're on to the point. I mean, they only had one guy left on at the end. Just they had that three person stack for so long that they only needed what <laughs> a millimeter once it was down to one. And uh, God, you're looking at what could be one of the more lopsided series on the year right now. So you get a 3-0 here, because you win what? By about 100 in the hard point, 6-1 in the search. A potential 3-0. This has been impressive, impressive stuff here from Legion. 
Again, for Carolina, if they lose this one, there's still a chance they can start winners. Relying, though, on uh, some others in the league, depending on how the matches go. But you, you never want that as a player. And I just really kind of expected more, just considering yeah. what's on the line with him getting into winners. Like, a little more fire, a little more passion. It's tough to do when you're losing, I know, but this has just been a statement from Legion. We're not done yet, though. This would be one of the crazier reverse sweeps we've seen. That's for sure, but it starts with an offensive round victory here. You do a great job. Yeah, that's a real efficient work there at A. You're up like five lives, you're able to get it. Probably the best we've seen from them. That Purge comes through like a hammer and able to take out two, slow things down for now. Oh, he's gonna find a third as well. Yeah, Purge just hits right over towards Tinky, kind of blocks those spawns. So, yeah, again, he's the one making that play. For Vegas Probably Legion. reason he's still on this roster. Yeah, Mace the, finds the multi-kill. Is now Carolina gonna start to work up through Junk? Well, Purge is ready for it. Yeah, well, ready for the stun though, but Tatch is there to help him out. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully he doesn't get hit by it, so Tatch able to chain together two. At the end of the little battle here, you have by Red, as Nero gets that final kill. And back to the blender, go Carolina. Now you're taking shots, as you're basically taking steps out of spawn, but you get through, you had two people here, they die so quickly, you were able to kind of slip through the cracks now and apply a little bit of pressure over towards B. Do you have a heroic moment in you now if you're Royal Ravens? Can you muster something together? TJ's gonna drop, Clayster's still up, he's out of it, and come, cool, collected from Legion again. Yeah, take their time, kind of find a, a pick or two. And now they're all grouped up. You still have Purge in that top red room. You can see him on the x-ray just right behind the, the door, and he's gonna find the first one. That'll slow things down here. 13 lives remaining here for Carolina, and there is Purge just finessing, leading the way with 21 in the lobby. He is locked, absolutely locked, putting people on skates, making plays, coming through clutch when he needs to. 45 good to go now to close it out. And a remarkable series here from Vegas here go, Legion. Though. But yeah, it's that three down. It comes quickly. It's like a lightning bolt, and suddenly Carolina Royal Ravens are on to it. I think it's it. They're stacked on it. You got spawning out so deep. You're going to rely on Purge here to try to find something. He's going to find a kill. Him and Geo, you were not four stacked on this if you were Carolina. It comes down to a one on one. Gwyn is going to win it. He's up to four in a row. So, still a chance here for the Ravens. It's just like that. Woo! You get around victory. Maybe some momentum, maybe. Maybe, maybe you thought it was done, and then it's three down off to the races they go. Gwyn, last man standing. He had like a little bit more to do than like we saw in the previous round where you got the victory if you were Las Vegas Legion. I thought for a second maybe it's a chance for them to get back, but not going to happen. They close it out, and now they try to claw their way back in this one. Maybe Gwen can earn a streak. You hold the defense here. It comes down to around five. Come on, Clay. Lock it in. But I just saw, like, yes, yeah, one or two players from Ravens kind of hop off that point. And that obviously slows, slows things down. Allow Purse to hit that flank. But uh, able, able to hold on to it was Gwen. Over to Fellow. And Clay trying to lock down this A side of the map. But Clay getting it taken down. Again, just some frustration from Clay. It's just the time he's not going his way. See, maybe they can go Fellow's way. He's got one on the uh, bridge side. Oh, no, it might. You thought it was going to be horrible. Oh, it was it was disgustingly bad. I think it's Gio that ultimately he gets the timing, gets the kill. Gio now up to three in a row. A about to be done. Clayster now looking to pounce, and the frustrations continue if you are Clay. Just one of those series that's going to eat at you. Yeah, now. he's trying to find a timing there, right? It looks like he's able to find it. If he finds the first kill, maybe his team helps him out, but they need to transition over to this B defense. But just look at the map position you have right now for Vegas. You are all over Ooh. the place, but Fellow locking down Junk. Yeah, nice little play there from Fellow. Probably like lost aim assist for a second, which kind of just getting snaps hunted. Like, what am I playing right now? <laughs> Two people are hunting me in my spawn. He's going to spawn there again. He's sitting there. He, yeah, he's like, all right, I'm chilling for a sec. You come to me. It's a, it's a standoff between him and Nero. This is my real estate. Who's going first? Oh, TJ's peeking. Yeah, he's still there, buddy. Now you got some help, though. 
But can Nero waste enough time for his teammates to take control of red? That's really the goal here. I mean, he's wasted a good amount of time. He's been alive in this area forever. One just kind of hits it right up the gut, though. Gwyn's able to catch that. Number two in Geo. We'll see if he can make the play. He's at least able to get one, and now... They start to push up towards the point, trying to take maybe TJ out of the play. Coming off a of spawn's going to be Clayster. Snarrow just sneaking on forward like a slippery little snake. Not to confuse it with snaking, he's just a slippery snake. But now you're going to have three on this point. TJ off spawn, he gets caught in middle alley. It looks like Attach is able to win that gunfight. One tick done, a team nade is in. Oh, that hurts. And now you're going to three flood this alleyway, and Geo is above you, taking out one Bye -bye. at a time, and that is it. Vegas with another win, five and two for the Vegas Legion. Yeah, and that's just not close. It's, if that was going to be... That's a statement, yeah. Yeah, if that was going to be any, like, Litness test, you're wondering if these two teams are close. They are not. Legion have their way with Royal Ravens. Through maps one, two, and three, it is just, they get ahead, they don't look back. What, first time as a franchise getting five wins right at qualifiers? It's a little bit different. We've had different number of matches and qualifiers, but like, listen, if you are the Legion franchise, You've you were five wins throughout like multiple stages. Yes, yes. I mean, you not. you were the laughing stock of the league for yeah. years. Now you've got this team looking at a winner's bracket berth, five wins on the board, improving day by day. Geo with another bomb at 29 and 16. Purge right behind him, 25. This team's got to be fired up, man. I'm excited to see what they can do. Because like, listen, we uh. You know, one of the things this year you had, it's so, it's so it's so lopsided at times. You have your top four, right? It's so set in stone. Like, who's going to be the team that might crack into that? Yeah, whoever Who's going to play spoiler? Round one might be the, the match of the first day of the major when we get there. Just a couple of days away on the other side. Yeah, Clay just 13 and 27. Another tough one for him. Fellow stepped up. You know, he really struggled versus the Heritage. He had a much better series here, but just wasn't enough. It looks like Carolina going to have to regroup again. There's still a chance for them to start in winners, but... Yeah, they're frustrated right now. Yeah, it's an insane one just because those final two teams, like if you end up with, what, five-win Legion, five-win Thieves, the top four the way they are, like, who the hell, I, well, somebody's getting in. Like, they're just limping in. But Yeah, they're there. <laughs> they're going to be in. Uh, to break down that first match, we kick it back to the desk. Take it away, guys. Thanks so much, Maven and Merck. And this was faster than I expected. I was hoping for a game five, but Vegas didn't give Carolina any breathing room in this series. Let's break it down. Was there an MVP? I saw great moments from Gio. I saw great moments from Nero. Or is it just a team event? How would you guys describe this match? Team effort, for sure. I think we've just seen a completely different level of Purge and Gio, respectfully. They look like different players in the past two series that we saw them. Respectfully, they are playing teams that have already kind of been on the struggle bus. But for Vegas Legion, I mean, this is just incredible. The hard point, I knew it was going to be a master class. Unfortunately for the Carolina Royal Ravens, which should have been a second set of rotation, P1 into P2, Purge gets to spawn out in Palace, which creates that natural pinch, and any hope of Carolina Royal Ravens trying to chain to get back into the game was absolutely yeah. obliterated. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. I think it was a balanced team effort, but I, I got to give out an MVP, man. Yeah, give to him. <laughs> My guy, Gio. I don't know what he's been eating for breakfast lately, how he's been feeling. He must be getting some great sleep because the man is here, and he is frying. This is what they needed. You know, like, they made that change, and fundamentally, they've been yep. sound. They've been a good team. But it takes another level to break into like a top four to have a run at a tournament. They look like they can have a run and beat some of the better teams in the league. And it takes performances like this across these last two matches. Gio has been unbelievable. In this series alone, 1.7 plus 25 takeover moments. Vegas are, I mean, they're playing great. And mind you, Ali Chris, this is a series where they were testing their map pool. They had never played high rise S and D. Yeah. Karachi control, another map they've only played twice on the year and not with this roster. So they're doing everything right. Bob, Bobbity, Bob, this match is done, but it's time to look at your play of the game brought to you by Scuff. And this one, who better to bring it to you than Gio? Walk me through the AR. They are dominance here. Hey, I, dominance? Well, I think what's so interesting about this situation is it's going to be this first invasion hardpoint and just his masterclass overall. In both respawns, he was simply that guy. But I think the biggest tale for me in this series had to be that search and destroy because, like Ann said, is the first time playing high rise, and this isn't typically a very strong search and destroy team. And the reason they put high rise and they test that in their map pool is because typically the ARs are going to be in that first opening duel. And well, Nero unfortunately has been eight and nineteen in his opening duel. 
tools. He has not been winning those first engagements. So what do they do? They spawn in on a map like High Rise and give Geo the opportunity to be in those first blood situations. And what does he do? He gets them every single time. And that's why they were able to win this second map so handedly. Nameless, are you concerned about Clayster on the other side of this fight? He had an off day today. Yeah, I mean, I'm concerned about the team as a whole. I mean, up until this match, it was fellow who was struggling. The ARs overall in Carolina just have not been great. Uh, they've had two really big matches for, that were winnable, like versus Vegas, versus Miami. Like, you want to secure your spot in winners and control your fate. You have to win these. And in this one, like, the, I know a lot of people have been talking about the veto process, and I agree. Why are you playing Invasion? You have never, ever won that map this entire year. It's lost you so many series, so a lot of questions need answering in the Carolina case. There's rumors that Carolina could be playing alongside each other come the next stage, currently all playing from home. With that aside, we got to talk with our winners. It's your monster winner, Spotlight Purge is joining us live. And Purge, I want to start here asking about that game number one, because we expected this to be a tight fight. But out of the gates, you guys went up 100 points in hard point. How did you take control so early? Uh, honestly, we just played our game. We just stuck to the game plan. Honestly, personally, I was a little surprised to see Invasion uh, hardpoint get through. Yeah. So uh, we took advantage of that, honestly. For sure, Purge, first of all, I want to congratulate you on another win and also how you have been playing individually is night and day compared to stage number one. I want to ask you, when did it click? When did you start feeling this consistency in your gameplay? Uh, I think definitely major one. I mean, it's no secret I was underperforming. Uh, I think there's a lot of factors into that, but uh, I think, you know, Major 2 came and I was just blessed that, you know, these guys around me gave me another chance, you know what I mean? Despite, you know, all the noise and stuff. Sure. So, you know, I knew I had to lock it in. So, you know, here I am. Of course, happy to have you. Uh, Purge, you know, you guys have been great throughout the stage, you individually as well. Do you do you feel like you guys have made a breakthrough this week? We've seen some, some big Ws and do you think you can contend for a championship at Major 2, truthfully? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the goal. I mean, you know, we're working day in, day out. You know, we're working on what we got to do, and uh, we're going hard every day in practice. So uh, that's definitely what we're uh, trying to get to. Purge, everyone's looking forward to the land down in Miami. People wearing shorts for the first time this year in some situations. Chad wants to know about your shoe game. What shoes are going to make it on the trip with you? Because we can see the collection to your right. <laughs> uh, honestly, um, for game day, I got some new Jordan 3s that I'll probably wear, but you know, the go-tos are the uh, just the white Air Force ones. That's the go-to every time. Fire, man. The cements are goaded. You pull those out, you're at least yeah, I got, yeah, I got those. All right, you can come <laughs> I got see you. in person. Can't wait to see you next land. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Remember, he's going down to Miami next week, and you all can follow with us as we are heading to major number two. A lot to be excited about. Ali, as we ra recap this first match, though, what's your big takeaway between these two teams? Look out for Vegas Legion come Major 2 time, man. It's next week. All right. And, of course, if you want to find out when these teams are playing, you got to sync your calendar, Nameless. Yeah, go to CallOfDutyLeague.com slash schedule or scan the QR code if you want to figure out when any team plays. We've got the primetime matchups. That's what you got to do. Sync your calendar. It'll pop up right on your phone. It's perfect. There you have it. We are done with match number one. We're going to a break. When we come back, Miami, Minnesota, who gets the second dub of Stage 2? Stay tuned to find out. your game with the scuff the official controller of the call of duty league start the season strong with the call of duty league pack grab yourself the cdl operator weapon blueprint and so much more check out the call of duty store in game now
Oh yeah. Oh, it's going on CDL TV, baby. <laughs> What do you think of my shirt today? Uh, it, it is a choice. It's a choice. Listen, guys, I put this shirt on. I felt pretty, I felt pretty sexy, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I looked in the mirror and thought, God, God, God damn. And then I got into the green room and everyone said, your shirt's too tight, you look like an idiot. And I was it's like, just a little too small, but it, it works. All right, man. Like, when you have the Slayers, when you have the talent there, it's all about putting it together. Stops the clock. You have to do a selling on the top side of the flat. Does indeed. That's good. Oh, the snap. Max stays alive. Another for Max. That's unreal. 23 seconds. Poor. From phase, it's a nade out of Arcities. Accuracy through the church alley. Finding a few more. Selliams on the other side. Prem gets the kill, and it's not over yet. It's all four down. It's 10 seconds. We've got two segments gone. And good God almighty, we might be going all the way. Phase flying in. And Seattle. Congratulations, Chris Puckett, Esports Awards Lifetime Achievement winner, Class of 2023. You're obviously being one of those players. Might have a, a little dance with Sandy here in a moment. And has the free fire as well. Gets it done and gets out with his life. Possibly the best player in the world. We're going to have some laughs during this match, Maven. I'm going to openly just ask, who will be the worst player we see in the All-Star game today? The worst player from all of these teams... Oh, this is hard, man. It's the All-Stars. Oh, I got to think about this. It's going to be Octane. It's you think gonna, it's going to be Octane? Yeah. He's, uh, he he's, was a beast yesterday. He was number two well, overall s and yeah, yeah, Yes, he has. But guess what? Octane's had one good event since, like, 2016. So. I'm going with Nameless, just because he can probably hear me right now. <laughs> he's going to choke big time. <laughs> Roaring early in Kenny. My, what is this round? Finding picks. Shotzi. The guy's Michael Phelps on. He's going for a deep swim around the flag. Shotzi. Or is it Aquaman? Coming up from the depths. By any means necessary. Everything I'm doing is legendary. Step in my office because I'm a boss, not a secretary. Second to none, I am primarily not Yeah, this is a rude awakening. Still got it on lock. You ain't getting the combination. About to shock the whole world. I am ready. There's the play from Liz with the back line from the hip. Get some bones. I'm just getting started. Time to turn it up. Going off in five, four, three, two, one. Pinch, the pinch. Minutes. All three of them gone. Rocker. He's able to find another gunfight as he did the second oh, oh, oh. Snow and sand. We got Miami versus Minnesota going down. Both teams one and five. And let's start here with the squad that's about to host major number two in their backyard. Miami Heretics finally got their first win over Carolina, and they did it convincingly with a one-three. Yeah, unfortunately, that last match kind of diminishes that win for the Miami Heretics. Uh, but for them, it's a nice bounce back. You know, we talked to Eric Boom in the interview, and he said, man, it's been very stressful. We've been working extremely hard, and we finally feel like we're making some progress. And, you know, in terms of this team and what they've been doing well, it's been the hard point. Five and five in that game mode. That's what needed fixing with the roster change. But unfortunately, they've fallen off when it comes to search and destroy and control. On control, they simply cannot win a defense last in the league. And in search and destroy, they can't get a first blood last in the league. So. 
those are the two glaring things I'm looking at in this series for them. On the other side, we got Minnesota, who loves to play as long as they can on camera. They're going to game <laughs> five again tonight. Yes or no, Allie? Absolutely not, because both these teams suck at game five, and Yo. they don't want it to go the distance. The last time these two teams matched up, it was a Miami win, but we're not looking at the same Miami that they went up against last time. Both these teams lost to a game five versus LADs, and Minnesota is easily the better control team in this series. They're 6-4 and four right now with a 6-2 retro record on Karachi. So, they're sort of looking to favor the respawn. Go ahead, Nameless. Can we just say, like, it's something psychological in Minnesota. Like, they're 1-5 and five in map 1, and they're 0-4 oh in map 5. To start an end series, they have been abysmal. Like, they just have to find some composure. And with that win versus Surge, maybe they found it. All right, I have a request for the observers during this one. Please keep eyes on the SMG as we go to Rio for a hard point. I call Linz to be the top fragger for game number one and the rest of this series. That's a super fair take. Uh, I believe in Minnesota and the series for sure. Minnesota? I'm going Minnesota as well. I think they, they, they bounce back. Once all right. Time. Miami, no love tonight. It's all purple in the prediction feed on the mic. So we got two legends back to join us live. It's Shift and Study. How you doing, Shift? Yeah, doing good. I mean, I don't blame you guys for being doubters of Miami. I think especially after the recent loss to, uh, you know, Southern Carolina get beat up by Vegas, it kind of like man said, it kind of really softens up maybe our reactions to that matchup when we saw yeah. Miami play them. But I think the thing here is you got to establish tempo early. That was a key to success when they are playing up against Carolina. And to be fair, it's something you may be able to get away with against a Minnesota team that, you know, really relies on Lens to set the tone. Yeah, and establishing tempo early, you're definitely going to be able to do it on this map, number one, in Rio. So if you're feeling good, if you are Miami, because you finally walked away with a W, but like you said, it was versus Carolina, who really haven't been showing anything throughout this stage. But the way that they got it done, last week they were sitting at eighth overall in rotations. After that series versus Carolina, they jumped all the way up to fourth. So that has yeah. to be yeah. the staple to what Miami needs to do, which is stay ahead of those fundamentals to try to win this game. Because Minnesota, we know about them. They're all about those fundies. Yeah, back-to-back -back hard points in both series they've recently played with the Rio and Subface now again being involved in this particular series matchup but a good start so again this is kind of what you want to see from the side of Miami SMG is getting forward finding some good eliminations and with that a little bit of map pressure as well yeah this is the perfect start if you are Miami you get all the kills you're gaining all this early P1 time and that's already 30 seconds away from this P1 hill and now you're forcing Minnesota Rocket to now make a couple of decisions do we rotate over towards next what angles do we tie to try to apply the pressure in towards p1 and every single time they try to make that decision miami make them pay for it this has been a flawless hold to start for miami and you know it's it's gonna be one of those things that let's just throw out a very 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 foreshadowed moment let's say miami runs away with this map kind of like they had done when they were playing up against carolina maybe you start to think about their map fluency needs to kind of grow a little bit but hey if you're able to get the confidence back into the shoes of metals who was a huge upstarter in qualifier stage one that would be, I think, a major momentum swing for this Miami team that's been kind of stuck in the mud. But rotating over towards P2, Minnesota here first with a couple of good eliminations, keeping it really just down to Lucky, but help has arrived, leaving Vivid by himself. Yeah, Vivid's here, but his teammates now arrive. Can they find these trades on to the point? No, it's still Miami coming out on top in those engagements. And like you said about Metals, he was one of my favorite players to watch at the beginning of the year because oh, he was just so damn fast. The rival nine in his hand looks like a shotgun, and he's just consistently always setting pace. And obviously, he found a little bit of that in that last series versus Carolina alongside Eric Boom. So those SMGs starting to gain more confidence. You even heard in the Eric Boost interview, all we needed was one win to start the train. Oh, ooh, Eric nearly able to finish off the last member into Linz, but lucky right there to find the final bullet. So scrap time going to be fought for by Miami. A couple of contestants here from Rocker, though, not giving up on the full time as of. Yeah, they're going to be late to rotation, though, especially as Metals is able to lock down a oh. as he finishes off the scrap time. Miami enjoying a 30 point cushion and the rotation to P3. Yeah, they're full map control. We were talking about staying ahead of the fundamentals, and that's already three hills in a row where they have done so. And now Minnesota are forced to try to break on in. You have a couple players going through boxes, big one-on-one -on -one gunfight, one right there by accuracy to potentially open up the flank. But you see the rest of his teammates, it's about five to 10 seconds before they even close to the hill. So Miami able to get those back spawns. They're gonna be able to take down accuracy, shut down that pitch put, and put their soul focus again all through middle map. Metal's on a heater. He's just not missing. Oh my. Eric Boom able to follow up. Nice little transfer over to Awakening who gets shut down outside the windows. Last one left is accuracy in the corner and he will be dealt with by Lucky. So again, Great stuff from Miami. Like you mentioned, good on rotation, but now all of a sudden, adding in some elements of being really, really formidable on their holds as well. 
Damn, they just, they came out and punched Minnesota right in the mouth. They weren't expecting them to be like this on a map like Rio, where Minnesota have found a lot of success. Miami only get their first W, which was last week. But obviously, practice has been working its wonders as they find themselves currently up by 80. But finally, Minnesota in a situation where they're going to be the team to win the rotation this time over towards speed four. This could potentially be a money hill. How long can they hold it for? Yeah, really good front line here. You can kind of see the high-low setup between Awakening and Lens. Only thing really not being covered would be vehicle over towards boxes. But the kills are so darn clean that, oh, I was going to say accuracy is now watching it. But doesn't make much of a difference. Vehicle does get traded just as he tries to enter into the hard point. But the fall from Miami is perfect. And give them a credit for a break here. This is a Again, just so darn quick, so darn clean for Miami. And they get that done in a 2v4 scenario. I was lucky yeah. to find two through the back end, vehicle through mid boxes. They put three dead. All it comes down to was the trade, but eventually Minnesota Rocker had the reinforcements to push their way back into the HP. The final 20 is potentially going to be theirs. You just got to take care of medals. Accuracy gets a read on him. So Minnesota have slowly climbed their way back into this game, and you already have awakening off the rotation. Tough gun fight there with Lucky, though. Follow up from Linz. Wow, just trying to chow out. Must have gotten a one shot call. Not sure if that was accurate or not, though. As Lucky finds two, no problem. So, once again, Miami find themselves winning rotation. This time, a little bit more labored, a little bit more tested, but Awakening can't snap back towards Eric Boom, forcing Linz to have to collect the trade. And with that, Heretics again win the early time here on our final hill. And the crazy thing is that Minnesota in the beginning of the season, they were one of the best game one teams that we had. They were basically undefeated in game ones, but you heard the best touch on it. One and five throughout stage two. That means you're starting off these series slow and they're already yeah. showing that. As they're currently down by 60 points, you have to try to turn it around and turn it around quick. And a couple kills going in their favor. It's going to lead to some much needed time at this P5. You're cutting out all the proper angles. All of Miami trying to attack from top mid. And eventually, Vico is going to be able to slip on through. But now positioning known. Wow. He does find one. The fact that he's still alive is mind-blowing. But it's still Minnesota holding on to the top. Eric Boom trying to finesse but gets stunned. That's enough for Awakening to finish off. The last couple of nations gave him three in a row. And with that, give Minnesota about 10 seconds worth of scrap. So back over towards P1. And you look over at the top of the scoreboard, sure, the gap is still a little bit wider than Minnesota would like. But honestly speaking, they're not getting terribly outslayed. The big kind of culprit right now is we haven't seen Linz be able to match up with the vigor that we're seeing from this Miami front line. Yeah, you know, it's only a matter of time before Linz decides to hit that switch. Because he's one of those rookie SMG players who is definitely up for that rookie of the year. And if he can start to turn it around, they can get right back into this game. But it's still a 50-point game. All out mixed facet towards go. top mid. Linz finds two. Vivid with the third. All you need is a trade on Eric Boom. He's just trying to slide around finesse with his life. He somehow is able to walk away with two. Now the reinforcements are here. Awakening trying to finesse a little while longer. So the hot streak from Linz still does not give Minnesota enough favor to break in for what is the vast majority of this time here on P1. And keep in mind, so you can look at your minimap. You've already got Eric Boom on rotation. He's got nothing but a 1v1 in front of him. So again, Miami's just kind of winning the war on both fronts. And that's enough for Eric to get in towards gate. Linz trying to find the kill in towards middle, finally collects it. But there are a couple of Miami members nearby that could possibly find this trade. No, oh, yeah, there are Miami's everywhere, but if wow. you are Eric Boomer, you're just hoping that your teammates are going to find a couple kills in the middle of the map. They don't find any, so it's Minnesota Rocker currently down by 60. Let's step aside and listen to the comps and see how they can try to bring this back. I kill a scaffold. One's back tree, back tree, back tree weak. I'm worried. 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 Back, 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 back
I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw. Eskies, Eskies in the back. Eskies in the back. Alright, tool, 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 tool. Give me close box status. Give me close box status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Wow, I mean, we're in an absolute battle. It feels like Minnesota throughout that. Listen, and we're starting to pull a pack. I mean, Lynn's nearly able to go on to a six streak for the cruise missile, but even still, you look up at the scoreboard, and there's Miami again, 50, 60 points up. Yeah, they were in the game at the end of that P2, but Miami stayed ahead in the fundamental column. They were making sure that they were the team spawning on a preferred side for P3, and now that's two times that P3 where they have dominated that hill. Holy. And off the rotation, you're thinking Minnesota, the way that they just got cooked that P3, you were properly set up for P4, but they already late to the party. Miami Heretics are in for the initial 15, and they can pretty get pretty damn close to even winning the game here if they can hold this down for the rest of the 40. I, they're just swarming. It just feels like at any of a moment in time, it feels like someone's hitting a pinch. It just feels like Miami have five members on the map. They're all over yeah. the place. And let's be candid, there are a couple of key 1v1s, 1v2 situations that are coming through for Miami that have really helped establish their success on rotation. So this scrap time looks pretty darn clean. Minnesota just kind of looking at it from afar and they're gonna have to default to playing to rotation here. Yeah, with only 15 seconds left, you have to give this up. You have to now play perfect Call of Duty, perfect HP from here on out. To try to bring this game back and the thing that's really been catching them off guard is, like you said, it's like there's five Miami players on the map. Every time they're trying to set up a push or trying to set up a break on one of these hills, they're getting flanked by one of the SMGs on the side of Miami. And now with Miami only needing 13 seconds, you have to make all these kills count. Lens and accuracy, they combine for two, but Meadow's there with the trade. Currently with top mid control, look how they're trying to set up Vico on that deep pinch. Yeah, this is all about if Vico can find the 1v1 with Awakening, and then, yep, there it is. Now you have a natural pinch starting to occur. Two players from the front, Vico from behind. He's also on five in a row. Not that I think he may need a cruise missile if this is successfully broken, but who knows? May still happen here for Minnesota. Holding on strongly. Dividend Lins. Accuracy stepping in. Okay, 28 seconds still to fight for here, and Minnesota have the reinforcements established to try to soak up the Marion time. Yeah, but now you're in a situation where if you are Minnesota, you have to not allow them to get any of that... P5 hill and you also have to start setting up off the rotation towards top B1. This is where Miami with all those SMGs in hand have been able to dominate. They find three in the feed. Last player up is going to be Vivid so they find the break at the old hill and they wow. currently have top mid control. This is basically going to be GG. Definitely feels that way unless Awakening can do something special but as he gets turned aside last couple of seconds are going to get tallied here for Miami and that is back to back real hard point master classes in their last two attempts and it just again I just I walk away with the flat out emotional reaction of this was the Miami that we saw play things like terminal hardpoint back during stage one qualifiers I don't know where it went maybe they just needed Rio to kind of get themselves going again but it seems like the motor is absolutely firing on all cylinders right now for the heretics on Rio get into a little Rio probably a little match victory underneath their belt to start to get that confidence to show in their gameplay you see it smiles all across the board for Miami they said there's no way in hell we're not going to be a good team at Rio I know we started at 0-3 but we have the SMG we have the pressure to make this one of our bread and butters and it continues yeah. to do it continue to show us week after week now two victories in a row on that Rio HP obviously great performance from medals 5k damage 21 non-traded kills and in vehicle right next to him 21 I mean 28 and 21 with 20 non-traded so just every single time a pace needed to be changed Miami was setting a tone all around the fundamentals I'm pretty sure the only time Minnesota won two rotations was at the very end of that P5 and the yep. first rotation at P4 you're not going to be able to beat a team when you're late off the fundamentals and that's what Miami made sure that they stay strong on this week was we do that little part we're going to find a lot of success in HP then I'll put some to six and five on the stage and that's the thing too you know when it comes down to like how are Miami winning rotation it's not just that they're chalking up the old time and then sending everyone there first you get these little plays from players like Eric who are just kind of outside of not just playing from scrap on the old hill but he's kind of cutting off rotational plays to where if he finds one for his life, that's enough to stop Minnesota from finding any yes. numbers from rotating over. So it's just, it's so pesty. It's kind of the way that I kind of think about it, you know, reflecting back over the highlights here. And, you know, that was something we saw last week as well when they played against Carolina. And the interesting thing about it, let's just assume that this thing goes to sub-base. They do the same thing there as well. It's just with more ARs than it is with SMGs, obviously. Yeah, and if you continue to play like that, that's what makes it super annoying to play against these kind of rosters. Because every time you're thinking, all right, they're going to chalk up the last 20, they're going to properly set up for the next hill. But no, those SMGs are creating layers off the rotation and even setting up pinches yeah. to make it a lot more difficult for Minnesota to execute the exact break that they want to come in. Just always being a nuisance, always being a headache on the backside for Minnesota Rocker. And unfortunately, they just could not get a read on it in map number one. And 
If you're Minis if you are Miami, obviously you get your victory last week versus Carolina, but you only have one victory all throughout this stage. You can walk away with the second one. You best believe it's going to do some confidence to where they can cause a couple upsets at their own major. 100%. I mean, it's the right time to start getting hot. Oh, yeah. All those college basketball fans out there, you look at the calendar, it says March. That's when madness starts to happen. It's trailed <laughs> into Call of Duty possibly here as well. We'll see. So off the game flow, now we start to look at what's to come. High rise, search and destroy coming up. You heard the desk talk about it. Neither team particularly great at securing first bloods, but when they do, conversion percentage is extremely good, in particular on this map, Jay. Oh, so yeah. that has to be kind of the main focus, you think. That's the craziest thing because I'm talking about overall in the map. It's like 27% of the time Miami find first blood, they win it 100% of the time. On the opposite side for Minnesota, 42% of the time overall on attacking or defending, they win it 100% of the time. And then more specifically, even on the attacks and defenses, when both of these teams find that first blood, they win the round 100% of the time. So it's all going to come down to whoever wins that gunfight right off the rip of the game. And on the same front, you know, you kind of take the opening duel percentage maybe out of the window a little bit. Success-wise, both teams have been particularly good on defense as well. In, spe in specific, I'm looking at what Minnesota's been able to do. I mean, they're 7-3 and three overall in defensive rounds, so yeah. that's incredibly well done. And, and I think on top of that, they're finding a lot of success on retakes, too. And they're allowing the bomb to get planted a lot. So I think from the defensive side, you kind of maybe take the focus, you put the spotlight there, and you say, starts with first bloods, and then it finishes off with how do you play around the objective, maybe more in specific towards Minnesota, who's so good defensively at finding retakes on the bomb. Yeah, you got to make sure it's a team effort. You can't force these one-on-one -on -one gunfights, especially if you're allowing that bomb to go down at B. You got to have those SMGs ready to contest and ready to trade those fights because we know how fast a map like High Rise can go down, especially early into these rounds where no team has any trophy systems to work with. Oh, yeah, underground is going to be the playground for a lot of these players, so expect the battle between Vivid and Meadows through that underground red story to be that battle for the first blood. Both teams are still in a position to try to fight for a little bit of winner's bracket action as well. You can see the Monster Energy pregame coming through. First and foremost, both teams need to find a way to win. That, yeah. That's going to be, you know, the first check that you have to find a way to mark off. But after that, it's going to come down to a lot of help from the other teams that are playing today. A little bit of assistance was earned right there with Carolina dropping. That kind of takes them out of a tiebreaker situation for that final position in the upper bracket. So the big focus now for both of these two squads, find a way to win. And for Minnesota, more in particular, it's all about finding a way to maybe be a little bit more successful on the offense. So their ranks are about 12th across the league in almost every category. Yeah, you got to figure it out. And it might be the caliber, the caterpillar crawl up to the side back of this propane tank. His accuracy is just trying to find this timing for the first blood. And he might have found himself in a perfect scenario to at least take down one. But it's lucky there for the instant trade 3v3. Delayed hit, though, from Linz over towards the opposite side of the map. Eric Boom is the only defensive player over on this A site, but oh, his vehicle predicted this. No, not quite. He looked out for a moment. Eric looking for the trade, decent shots, but no kills. And with that, Minnesota now hold the numbers and the possession over towards the B site and the propane tank blows up right at the end. So that's a clean finish there for Minnesota on their first offense. Yeah, they had the numbers, they had the propane working in their favor. And they also find the first blood on the back of accuracy. Already keeping the numbers that we talked about before this map. 100% as Minnesota get the first blood, they walk away with the attacking round. Now Miami forced to respond on their attacking side. And I don't know if anyone was able to develop a couple kills in that round to get those trophy systems down towards B Street. So sure, yeah. it might be another slow and steady round for Miami here on the attack. See what the focus is going to be coming out of spawn. Bomb will be voluntarily left behind this initial push over towards A. And wow, Nettles from across the map takes care of accuracy. Difficult shots from Eric, but does tag up Vivid, pushes him off the high ground. So that will be a little bit of information denied as Minnesota will no longer have the ability to scout across the map. And now you already have a lot of information gained if you are Miami, because you were able to take down accuracy across the map. You already have propane control and you already have crack shack. So you can start to push out over towards A. It's just to try to find this time and to work that bomb play because there's so many different angles you can check from if you are Miami. Linz eventually is able to take down Viku, even up the numbers at 3v3 now. Yeah, and they know Awakening is playing on the other side, top elevator, but it's just he's such in a hard position to fight back from. And maybe Eric right there gets the information that he's vacated that premise. So Awakening is actually looking to isolate. Yeah, he's gone forward. They find a way to isolate on the metals, but Lucky responds. Big 1v1 here that Eric Boom needs to find a way to win, but gets caught on the mantle. And everything gets reset 1v1 between Lucky and Vivid. 25 seconds left. He's going to be able to recover that bomb, but 
Last information that you knew, Vivid was in his spawn. He's now all already finds himself behind enemy lines, so he's going to be able to work this bomb plant down at A for free. But Vivid might catch the timing here. Yeah, how does Lucky try to set himself up post this plant? Oh, he's still worried about the defensive side of spawn, and Vivid just says, hey, how you doing? No worries there. Minnesota off to, I won't say a raging start here, but a good one nonetheless, 2-0 up. And that simply comes down to the play from Awakening. I don't know who invested that smoke grenade through bottom middle, but he just gives him his positioning to th from top propane, jumps right through that B-bomb site, is able to find a kill and then find a second as well. Then once you turn it into a 1v1, lucky he gets the bomb down for free, but he's still thinking that Vivid is in his spawn. But unfortunately, he hit the ring around the Rosie all the way up to that B street and was able to find a freebie for Minnesota to not win two in a row. That's against the first blood, by the way. Keep in mind, yeah. so that conversion percentage. One of the two teams is not going to have 100% conversion percentage anymore. <laughs> Nades aggressively set over towards A from Minnesota. Nothing landing, at least from Vivid's perspective. Beagle playing a little bit deep. Eric Boom a little bit further forward here. Double stack defense over on A, which means that this B site is wide open, and Miami's going to have to play retake here. Yeah, Vivid already got all the info he needed to get. Unfortunately, his teammate in Awakening does get first blooded, but he's instantly there to respond. Now, 3v3, you have B-side control, but oh. Linz, you could just relax there. Force your SMG to try to put this bomb down. It's Miami again in a man advantage. Yeah, I think he may have heard shots from Lucky initially and thought maybe I have some timing to push through, but not the case at all. Miami collapse over the top of the B-side. So, not officially a retake since the bomb didn't get planted, but... Let's call spade a spade. They essentially had to re-grab the site, and they do it very cleanly. So, good awareness there off that mid setup. And that just shows you right there that Linz is one hell of a teammate. Because if one of his teammates are getting shot at, he's going to put himself in a position to at least assist them. But unfortunately, that's a gunfight he didn't want to challenge towards the top end of that B Street. Puts his team in a man, man disadvantage, and then Miami with the numbers. Just trade efficiently in towards the B site. Finally get on the board with Lucky. Now having a phenomenal search and destroy. So far, I remember in the beginning of the season, he was like Mr. Search and Destroy. If yep. he can get back to that footing, Miami don't need to be sweating in S&D. Yeah, and it was the case with his other two teammates that played with him a lot of the year last year in Challengers. It was the same thing. But, I mean, you look at Lucky and Search, and he is Mr. Automatic. Eric, little mantle, sees maybe the tippy top of accuracy's head deep, but no chance to challenge that. Bomb making its way over. Stun just to make sure no one's hiding in the corner. And Lucky tries to reinforce, but denied accuracy, taking a very advanced angle over the top of this B site at range. And no confidence to plant as of yet, but Eric's still going to try to hop it. Right. I, I, was, I was just waiting for him because you gained all yeah. that info about 10 seconds into the round that no one was going to be in towards the B site. But now you allow Minnesota Rocker to know where the pressure's coming in from. Accuracy finds the first blood. Wow. Linz is there for the trade. Great communication from them. Minnesota, 3v2. David's got to play Overwatch here on top of Hilo. Accuracy needs to start making a play forward just to try to assist at all to try to get this bomb defused. I mean, there's a lot of time ticking on the clock here. Smoke comes down, but Vivi gets tagged with enough information saying Miami needs to go to make sure this defuse doesn't just get stuck. Lucky's gonna have to be the one to check it, but he's nowhere near. Wait a second, Vivi may have held this long enough. The pistol's out, and yes, he does get the kill just in the nick of time. Accuracy now for the 1v1. He's gonna immediately have to hop it. Lucky, two in a row from the ladder side? No, this time it's a little bit safer, a little bit easier. And Miami respond with a back to back round. Oh, that's good stuff right there from Miami. I was going to get on them a little bit, but just waiting so damn long to put that bomb down. But once they get it down, they put themselves in the proper setup. Lucky through underground is able to find a final couple of kills. And he does find three on a, in the round. So he could potentially earn himself a cruise missile early on into the search and destroy. And I just think, like, if you're Minnesota in that situation, you know exactly where the play is coming in from. We just have to be a little bit faster on that retake because you allow Miami to get that bomb down, then maneuver their way out of the site. You're wasting all oh, your yeah. attacks. Nothing is going to be able to connect, and then you're forced now for someone to instantly sink that defuse. And unfortunately, Lucky catches them off guard. He ends that round on a five streak, one off for the next cruise. All oh, metals getting aggressive in towards his B defense. Has help from Lucky over towards the elevator alley. Eric has to play a little bit more passively over at A. Accuracy saw him, watched him the entire way. Now the only defender over towards the A site would be Metals. And wow, that's a hell of a set of shots. Takes care of Lint. Accuracy top helo has Lucky in his sights. And wow, how is Lucky still alive? I don't know. Thankfully, the propane tank kept him alive a little bit longer. Accuracy could not commit to his that wall bang. But he sets up his teammate in vivid and shut down Lucky. No cruise missile is going to be earned. Minnesota Rocker now in the man advantage. You can already see where Metal's on the map. He's going to be able to yeah. find a freebie for accuracy. Instantly a 2v2 with only 40 seconds left. That stalls out Minnesota pretty considerable. Oh, yeah. You have to make sure he's not still over at green. And Metal's is gone. He's out of there. 
But this is going to take time to clear. Awakening's just kind of watching over the top of the map from the topside elevator. And he's not going to be able to see anything. So this is going to be a blind commit for Minnesota towards B. Here's the hop for the plant. Metal's rotating back over. Awakening playing inside elevator. Vivid on the exit. Not fully caught, but there's information there. But unfortunately, Vika will drop. Metal's to the 1v2. And this doesn't look very good. Vivid off the regen is going to play top propane. Awakening down low. And, well, Jay, this would be an impressive one. Ooh. And hold the phone. Awakening repositions here. Metals has to go re-clear elevator, but Awakening's nowhere to be found. He's reset down the lane with an AR. Shots are in, and finally Awakening puts it out of reach. Ooh, the fact that Metals even had an opportunity in that fight to clutch up to that round. If you're Vivid, you just can't give him that free peek, but good play out of Awakening to read the setup, at least early on in the 2v2. He finds a freebie through the middle of the map, and then... The rewrap, ring around the Rosie. This time it's him going up to the opponent side of that B Street. He has the AR. He hits the early couple of shots. So he has one shot, pulls out the Renetti to close out the round. Minnesota Rocker. Finally stopped the bleeding. Take advantage again. Up 3 2 now. And they get all the info early on when they're just sending everybody through underground, jumping on into the site. Well, call you Lisan Al Gaib here. You've seen the future, brother. Miami, but it's going to be tested this time by Minnesota deep, and it is a heavy stack over towards this B site. All in all, it does end in a 2v2 situation, though, with still plenty of time in the clock. The only issue is Minnesota have a lot of elevated positions to where they will get the intel once it eventually crosses their path. Oh, yeah, they have everything cut off. You already had the rotation coming in from Vivid, but he does commit to that gunfight. He loses it. Now it's instantly a 1v1. Eric Boom versus Agassi, the Iceman versus the Rookie. But 45 seconds left. If your accuracy just try to back on up, force him to beat you by putting the bomb down. Yeah. 35 seconds on the clock. Here comes the crossing of the paths, and it's just perfect from accuracy. Okay. Not much here I can do right there. I mean, it really is just down to do you find yourself in a good position with the rival nine to take the 1v1 and accuracy. Pretty much made sure the entire way through that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, it's just Minnesota took so much round after turning yeah, to a yeah. 2v2. You had top heli. You already watched them not push out of their spawn so you had all the map control you know it's only a matter of moments for eric boom when he walks out of the base you have to check so many different angles of where accuracy is going to be playing probably got to read that he's going to be in the back of his spawn but unfortunately does not check the elevator and accuracy clutches up in the 2v1 for minnesota rocker to not give themselves a nice little comfortable cu cushion up two rounds back on the attacking side and hopefully someone has a trophy on his left street because these nades are coming Accuracy only stun does get top propane very quickly. A lot of the nades have been fired off early. Late trophy placed by Miami defensively deep towards this lane. Linz over the top, just making sure Vivid stays safe. He's hopping in for the plant. Quick play here for Minnesota. Miami going to have to have a, some sort of a gut check reaction call. And uh, there's a trophy down to keep them safe. This is going to be a tough test. Because you have to check all these corners, but at least you take care of the bomb carrier. So now in the 4v3, oh, make no. it a 4v2. Great read out of Lucky to catch accuracy. Now someone just stick the, the fuse. All but Linz hops in, finds the kill, gets out of there. Awakening follows up to the middle of the map. Hold on a second. This isn't done yet. Awakening does get traded out, but Linz is still in a position to where he may just hop this. Smoke comes through first, and he's got mind games in play. Over the top. First one Ooh. goes through, but Lucky right there just to make sure it gets cleaned up. Maybe a chance there for Linz, but... Just flat out overwhelmed, and that's enough for Miami to find the defuse and put this back to within one. Yeah, Miami found the first flood. They found the second onto Agerson in the 4v2. Someone on the opposing end has to walk away with at least a two-piece to make that round even count. But once it turns into a 2v2, able to trade Awakening and a double chow. Not really worried about the smoke grenade. And those cheeky plays coming in from Linz as Miami read it perfectly. Now down 4-3. Can they flip the script here, though, fully? Because we haven't really seen them find tremendous amounts of success, even in the bomb planted offensively. We talked about Minnesota great with their retakes, in particular on this map. But at the same rate, they also let the bomb drop in and get planted pretty often. So can there be some success here for Miami to actually find a way to get this thing fully back to level terms? They're going to have to do it eventually. Lots of focus again back over towards B. Good names defensively hold a lot of this back. Awakening also alerted that this play is on the way and he will find shots to push Metal off his angle. Yeah, Metal's just going to back on up. Wait for his teammates to try to assist him, but this can play out perfectly if you are Miami because if you can jump up through the underground, potentially find this kill for free on towards the B site, 
That could be just enough to work this bomb plan as Meadows is going to try to clear it out. Yeah. This time, no stuns are going to be there, but Meadows gets the read on it perfectly. 3v3, but Vivid instantly there to response. Puts his team in the advantage again. Yeah, man, I, I, this is the third time we've kind of seen this same setup defensively for Minnesota. This time, Linza steps into the site, though, but you've got accuracy kind of on top of boxes inside his defensive windows. He can watch any... He just is just watching that ladder push. Vivid from Heli Stairs can follow up if accuracy gets the intel, and it's just so difficult for Miami to break through this setup with having no pressure at all. But somehow, some way, Lucky is able to walk right up through the middle of the map. Find that kill onto Vivid. And now with only 15 seconds left, you have to commit yeah. towards his bomb plant at B. So it all falls into the hands of Lucky. What can he try to get done? You get it done by yourself. Pushes right through the middle, finds a freebie onto Vivid, but then knows that the last two players from Minnesota Rock are, are in their spawn. Lines up the first onto Accuracy, and then the snap onto Awakening. This guy's taking over, man. What's that? Is this 14 yeah. already? Like, he yeah. might be going for 20. 14 and 5? Is that what I saw? Jesus. I know it. And the fact of the matter, like you mentioned, like, they win that round 2v2, moving through the teeth of the defense. Actually, it was a 2v3, wasn't it? Because Vivid on yeah. the stairs. And then you've got double crossfire setups from ARs deep in towards mid, and they still push through. It's 14 and 4, five in a row. So, I mean, Lucky has been a literal lifeline here for Miami. We're back to a 4v4 and 4 2 4 over on the scoreboard. And Accuracy's going to get dropped early by Vehicle, the sole defender over at A. So now all of a sudden, Minnesota have issues they need to deal with. Yeah, now they're in a man disadvantage. And if you give a kill to Lucky, you give him a cruise missile. It's going to put himself in a very good situation to potentially at least walk away with one guaranteed round. Awakening throwing a couple shoulders. Vehicles finds his second, this time on to Vivid. Instantly a 4v2. Eric Boom finds a third. And this is where, you, if you're Miami, you have to communicate to try to give Lucky this final wow, kill. Bro. But Vico is feeling himself. He finds three in a round. Miami now at game point. And the trends have completely been absolutely flipped on its head. I mean, flat out, I was about to say, like, this Minnesota defensive setup, when they're playing through mid like this, has been super successful for them offensively. They're also finding good value in the early 4v4s, 4v3s, but now all of a sudden, Miami has completely changed the tone. Said, I don't care what your setup is. I'm going to break right through that. Quick round to follow up immediately afterwards. Has to have Minnesota second-guessing, and I don't know what you run here. I mean, defensively, what do you call? I think you just do the same thing that you did before. Have Agassi call on that cross, but get your SMGs in positions where oh, they can no. find success. Unfortunately, the propane is going to be able to take down Awakening because it's already a man advantage for Miami in a 4v3. And Agassi's stuck here. I mean, the only bit of good news is he's got Vivid watching his cross over the other side, so he's not fully isolated. And on top of that, the Heretics have no idea that he's positioned this side because he hasn't been here before. <laughs> Green shots from Vico across the map. Accuracy hunting for a trade. Oh, Vico gets the info, resets. He's off the region, but the pistol too good. Follow up though, trade, perfect. That's enough for the cruise pistol get earned. Linz has to track all the way back through underground to his spawn and look at Miami. Lucky's already positioned forward just to make sure if Linz has to make this call, he will be taken out and now the information will be known. Now, if you are Miami, do you try to commit for the bomb wow. plant? No, all information gain and just going to send it on to Linz. And on the back of Lucky, who had one hell of a game in that game number two, Miami clutch up in the surf and destroy, a mode that they have been struggling with all throughout this stage. But clutch got on a map that you only played once. Keep in mind, they only yep. played high rise once time, and they lost a 6-5 versus Atlanta. Now you walk away with it in a clean 6-4 versus Minnesota. Oh, they're going to start adding this to the map. Map pool, you best believe that. Miami up 2-0 in the series. Massive stuff, man. And I think this is, again, layer by layer, map by map. We're starting to kind of shed the creeping doubt that we started to have about was the performance last week versus Carolina just kind of a softball for them. Now, all of a sudden, you blow out Minnesota on Rio. You string together four straight rounds, three straight rounds at least, yeah. get on the high-rise search and destroy, all of which are super convincing. And let's be honest, 15 and four from Lucky was definitely assisted, especially in some of the closer rounds. But flat out, Miami, this is again, I, I just keep going back to it. I, I'm sorry, fans out there, but this is the Miami that we came to kind of know. And for some of us, love in the first four weeks of stage one qualifiers. They're just playing with so much confidence.
Yeah, they're playing with so much confidence that even down 4-3, Lucky with 20 seconds left, just run straight up the middle of the map. We saw accuracy before we even switched player games. He was watching every single angle from the back middle of the spawn. He must have got some really bad timing because Lucky just sprints right through the middle, finds that kill onto Vivid, and then takes down accuracy and awakening behind enemy lines. Like, that's a round that if you're Minnesota, you can't let get away because then you put that at game point. Instead, it goes 4v4, and then Lucky, his confidence is just there and continues to go on through the rest of the map. Well, it's a dominant map number one for Miami. A little bit of a comeback effort and some heroics from Lucky to get that map number two. And all of a sudden, we start to think, is it possible that Miami could somehow pull off a 3-0? Which, by the way, they don't just need a win here. If they can find a way to 3-0, that helps out their map count differential for possible tiebreaker situations. So call it what it is. If you're a Miami fan, it's a must win Karachi. We'll see you on the backside of the break for the control. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Ten in a row, looking for the 11th. That's the round. You may never see one like it. Everyone from Vegas leaves a trap behind enemy lines. This is tough. As Ghosty finds three with one clip. Those are great shots. That is what Shotzi buys his team so much time. He's able to find three more. He is just going, and you see what this does for their hard points. He's just so good at being elusive. Yeah. It can be such a pain in the ass to deal with. But those are, that was a very, very good listening. And a reason uh, you're seeing this score busted wide open. And map yeah, one is good. done. This guy is insane. Same time as Seam once again gets a kill. He's got two in this round. Every time you get numbers, if you're Optic, Seam has brought it back. Seam working on the ace. That's three for him in this round. It was plant or hold for the kill. Dashi chooses to hold. Get a child, not gonna happen. It's an ace for biggest Seam. What a brilliant moment for the newcomer on this Boston Breed squad. Faze holding it down, looking for the win right here and now. It's Haven, draws in the feet. Sim joins them for the posterity, and that's giving you the final 10, and that should be map one. That is a nail in a coffin. He'll sit, by the way, with nearly 7k damage. So, Simp was almost untouchable. Shotzi might have the timing on the flank. No one's going to turn. This bonus as well. Oh, come on. Shotzi's playing real good tonight. Nice tags. I don't have a clue as to how he has managed to survive. Shotzi versus the world. He can't get the third, but here comes Shotzi. Ten in a row. Looking for the last. Around. You may never see one like it. Damn. Welcome back, everybody. Like we kind of teased before the break, the winner's bracket is definitely still possible for Miami. It would be super helpful, not only if they, well, they need to win this series, Jay, but they also would love to see it go 3-0. Oh, and yeah. the interesting thing about it here is, you know, this series doesn't get any better for Minnesota when you look at the maps and modes that are still ahead. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But again, this Miami team catching a little bit of fire, which means that, hey, sometimes the home team crop just gets a little bit lucky, Jay. And we've got tickets still on sale if you want to come root the Heretics on in person. Oh, yeah. Make sure you guys scan that QR code. You can potentially find Miami Heretics making it out of that first round because obviously the 
first major wasn't the best to them, but now they're going into their home turf. And the way that they are looking right now, they're definitely trying to cause a couple upsets at their own event. So far, it's been, I won't say upsets necessarily, but it's been kind of eye-opening matches. The win versus Carolina last week, and now a chance to possibly 3-0 Minnesota Rocker, who, again, just based on their record, have not had a great stage. And I'm sure there's lots of people out there kind of wondering why after the heroic run they went on, kind of the end of stage one qualifiers into major one, but that has not been evident at all in this stage qualifier whatsoever for Minnesota. So Miami with the Karachi control ahead of them, a sub base also lingering, and then Minnesota who's terrible at map fives. I mean, it just doesn't really feel all that possible based on what we've seen from Minnesota to pull off the reverse sweep, but I don't know. Maybe there's a little bit of a lifeline here to reset the series and come out with one of your better controls if you're the rocker. Yeah, this is their best control, and this is the lifeline for them. You're going into your bread and butter control map, and then on the opposite side for Miami, they haven't found success on Karachi control in about two months. That's the last time they won this damn map. They played it versus Atlanta, they got 3-0. They played it versus Toronto, they lost all the way in round number five, but they just haven't found any success on this map. But as you take a look at the pregame for Miami Heretics, you win to keep your hopes alive. Losers can keep you, I mean, if you lose, obviously you're going to start in a loser bracket, but you need all the maps that you can get to potentially earn yourself a winner's bracket so you get multiple chances at your next event. 100% the case. And again, map count will be massive towards possible tiebreaker scenarios here for the side of Heretic. So they're looking to get this thing done cleanly in three. It would go a long way. But they will be starting off on the offense. The other thing to keep in mind here, Jay, about both these two teams is that from both sides, both offensive and defensive, they're great at either finding success capturing ticks or on the flip side defensively, not allowing their opponents to find tick progression on this map. So this very well may be about who plays the objective better. And I think just the way that Miami so far in this series, the way that the SMGs are playing, the, how fast the ARs are playing, they're going to be able to set that tone early on into this control. They find the first couple of kills around the middle of the map. The second sick of progression is about to get called in. You already see their setup. No one's trying to edge on now. Minnesota Rocker, they're more of more in their setup trying to play for the trap. And with those two kills, they're going to be able to take that player down in A and now force all of Miami to hit that recent in the back of their spawn. Although Mendels, whoa, big wins. Opens up space on this overextension through the backside at A. And actually may go a little bit further beyond that. He wants to clear out top fire. Well positioned here for Mendels on four in a row. Can also track backwards to make sure no one's sitting over to try to block off the spawn. Shots are vivid should alert and almost the beatdown, but Metal's off to a 5 0 start. I mean, he's picking up where he left off on the Rio. Get this guy a sub and he just goes crazy. Yeah, this is what he does. He's going to be able to find those timings with the SMGs, but it also allows his teammates now to sprint up freely up through that junkyard area. But now he's just trying to get a baited switch going because he can earn that cruise missile if he finds it. Yes, he finds that kill onto Awakening. So cruise missile earned. You already were able to extend that time by completing that progression over towards the A point. So you have a minute and 40. The first starts by taking control of Drunk. You got to eliminate Linz, but Linz shuts down that play by himself. He finds two, and now Miami forced to break out again. Should be dead to rights here in the corner. Should nope. be. Please, someone get the trade. Don't let Linz do this. Pistol nope. out. You're going to chill him with a pistol? Finally, <laughs> Vehicle gets the kill, but boy, that was expensive. Essentially a three for one. Accuracy also makes sure that Metals cannot sneak over towards that top soda position. So even though it's a great start for Miami, Minnesota hold a four life advantage, and we're down to 70 seconds left in the clock. Damn it, at least now if you are Miami, you have somewhat junk control. But for how long? Because there's a couple players from Minnesota reading the pressure of where it's coming in from. You also have accuracy all small and knowing that one player is going to go on that pinch. You take care of him. And that's already now been a minute wiped off of the game clock. Not a single player from Miami even farther pushed up close to that B point. The defensive setup right now for Minnesota too strong. Yeah, absolutely the case. A little test around the back. Eric Boom makes his presence known over towards the rocker spawn. Uh, but this is poor timing for Lucky, you'd think. He kind of comes around the back as well. He's shooting at ghosts off screen. Awakening just kind of working his life a little while longer. But, the, you know, regardless of what happens back here, Minnesota's set up from the front side of the zone is still so far forward that it really doesn't make a difference if Eric stays back here or not. He's got to come help. Yeah, this is their last push, too, because you see those spawns from Miami. Everyone over towards the chicken coop, so they're forced to overextend. You have to get past Awakening, who was the player who just came off the respawn. You find that first kill. Vico finds a second onto Vivid. So this is the last opportunity for Miami to try to get in. And they got five seconds to do so. You got to go. Accuracy on the cross. Only able to take down one. Linz tallying information as he steps in as the last defender. But Metals keeps his life. Help. Assistance nearby. But does eventually get tricked away. Eric Boom now. The last one left. It would have to be a 1v essentially 3. He's getting challenged from all sides. And Minnesota will eventually find the kill they need. Six life gap at the end. And really no progress to speak of over towards the other zone at B.
Yeah, that's just a good defensive setup right there for Minnesota. At the beginning of the year, they were one of the best defensive teams that we had on Karachi, and they continue to show it as they are every single time off the respawn, refilling those gaps that were needed to be filled over towards the junk side, making sure no one is overextending. The players coming off spawn, that's your angle. They just had a read on where every single player from Miami were trying to apply that pressure from. And they hold strong on the defense, only allowing three segments to get away from them. And I'm pretty sure Linz is now activated. I don't, I don't yeah, know if he's yeah. saying that 10 already. Yeah, 10 and 3. That's a good start from your main SMG. Yeah, 1.05 control KD for Linz. He is by far the best on the team. So if you can essentially provide what he had moments of on the Rio hardpoint, but throughout this control, that could be maybe your X factor to try to reset this series. But quickly off the break off Miami all over it, not allowing Minnesota anything over the top of the A zone. Eventually, Vivid will survive long enough to kind of keep the clock stopped, but Lucky Top Bricks thought he had an angle at it, but not quite. Vivid wins it relatively cleanly off the reset, not quite, as Eric Boom will make sure that Miami continue to make sure this clock keeps on ticking. Yeah. Don't even allow, allow that first segment to get complete as well. You already have players up to a junkyard. You already have players trying to cut off through the middle of the map as well. So Minnesota, they do not have an angle. Or at least the trades, the gunfights going in their favor to stop this got this game clock over at the A point. Finally, though, vivid and accuracy able to take down Eric Boom. First segment is going to be complete. And you see Miami on their setup. They're going to be nice and slow to this one. So they might just give this one up for free. Awakening playing from top third finds Eric off his spawn. A couple of shots from Lucky, kind of similarly so, over towards that top AC position. But yeah, absolutely not enough success nor kills to find a way to break back over. So the extra 60 gets tallied. 20 plays, 21, small advantage for Minnesota. But still not a lot of ground to work with here in terms of breaking things open. And as wins will drop, Minnesota have to come off spawn and restructure. Yeah, they have to try to get out of the spawn. But at least the good thing for them is not a single player from Miami are already pushed up towards junk. So you can apply that pressure up through red side. You knew that Vika was the guy at least playing over towards Ticket. He finds a freebie onto Accuracy, able to dance with death and walk away with his life. If you can earn this cruise missile, you have two to work with on the side of Miami. But they're just trying to have the same exact setup, the same response that Minnesota had on their defense. Already 45 seconds knocked off that game clock. Trades back and forth. 50-50 gunfights, largely speaking, but Miami start to earn a bit of an advantage in that life lead. 60 seconds now down two. Minnesota do kind of sneak through the middle of this defensive setup and as vehicle drops Maybe a bit of cause for concern here if you're Miami because Minnesota's gonna be able to hit this with some force Lucky tries a challenge on accuracy and a huge 1v1 win That'll slow down Minnesota just about to a halt Metals has also slipped forward He tracks out vivid and now it's just down to finding these last couple of rock members that have made their way in towards mid map and speaking of, it is just awakening last one left as Vico finds the kill. Clean defense here for Miami now in the set of the first spawn trap. And that was such a big kill from Lucky because if he loses that gunfight, it all falls into the hands of Metal. So he's trying to shut down three players over towards red. But once he finds that kill, you see Metal with the heads up play, turns around, catches the player off spawn, and then Lucky continues to slay in towards top red. And now that's only 20 seconds left. Minnesota's last hoorah. Wow. You have one player going on a pinch, awakening through middle. So they have an avenue to try to get on in. Accurate should be able to just step on into the zone, stop the clock. Yeah, he's even got nades that are hitting over the top of the jump wall. So that kind of keeps Miami a bit at bay. Hold on a second. Cruise missile. Late round heroics here for Minnesota. Second player gets stacked. There's the extra tick. Cruise missile called, doesn't find anything. Kills for Miami, start to come through, but they still have to clear off the zone. Second ticket progress. Now finally contested, but Lynn steps out, finds the kill. Eric and Metals trying to work out for the last couple of the kills, and they will, but the extra tick does get tallied there for Minnesota at the last moment. Yeah, you would take that if you are Minnesota to at least put yourself up in the segment column. Now you're leading by one, but you also get the investment of at least one cruise missile on the side of vehicle. So you don't have to worry about that going forward. But Miami, good on the defensive end. Tie the game up at one. And now you just have to make up for those segments. I would like to see an early B pressure play because I feel like Miami, at least in the beginning of the year, they were one of those teams that would catch you off guard. Everyone was sure. going over towards A, stacking that point. But when you're able to catch them off guard for a B play, you're basically going to guarantee an attacking round. So I'm really curious to see what their initial start is on this round. That'll be probably the kind of thing to highlight for both these two teams. Is there going to be any trickery up any sleeves here? I mean, for Minnesota, we kind of heard it from the desk. We also mentioned it briefly, but this is their most rehearsed and by far best control. So we'll see if they do get tested, they have a response, or if they have something possibly up their sleeves on their own right. But for Miami, nothing strange here. A little bit of focus over towards Hotel. Eric gets traded out, but at least finds one for his life as Eagle stays safe on the point. Contested, though. Accuracy trying to jump on in, but Metal's quick to recover, and that'll be the first take gone. 
Yeah, first segment already complete. You have a lot of the left side control if you are lucky. Also finds the timing to not allow Vivid to eliminate his teammate on towards the point. And Miami, with all these kills that they're getting, it's time to hit that rotation. You already have Vico trying to push out towards the backside of Cap Bay. But with all your teammates dropping, this is probably not the best time to invest that cruise missile. Yeah. He was thinking it was going to go complete opposite, but... At least that segment is going to get completed today. You're going to have two minutes and 18 seconds to work over towards B, which your teammates having a little bit of map control before they all get cut down. If it does get caught, though, so Miami, like you mentioned, working through the middle of the map, reinforcements quick to get here. Accuracy, the only one inside the zone. Linz, seen over towards Arches. That's enough information for Beagle to find the free kill. Trade from Lucky. Think he saw Vivid as well, kind of come over the top uh -oh. of the jump ball. But look at Eric Boom, he's on the pinch. He should have two for free. Finishes both of them off cleanly. And now all of a sudden, Miami, they should just be able to stack this. Two players on. First tick already gone. Second, surely to come with now three players stacked here. Minnesota have to try to hit this in the middle of the map. Jay, I don't think they're even going to get here in time. You got to win fights from long range, and it's not going to work out. Miami get the quick capture. Ooh, I know they had two cruise missiles that got nothing done. Keep that in mind. When you get a cruise missile, it's usually going to guarantee one kill. But when you're finding those kills close towards red, at least finding that trade on the vivid, you keep influencing those spawns for Miami to spawn close over towards that red side junk. And they were able to just use their numbers to bully their way in through the cafe. Eric Boom ends that round on five. But now if you are Miami, you're up 2-1. You're up by what? Now three to four segments? So you have to try to make that up if you are Minnesota, but that's exactly the way that yep. you wanted to respond on that attacking ground. Now one kill from Eric Broom until he earns himself a cruise. Yeah, they're going to need to obviously win this offense, but as you mentioned, it's a five tick difference. Yeah. So if they do it by lives, they have to at least capture two ticks over towards this B zone. But once again, Miami just right off the break off, not worried about just waiting to see where Minnesota are going. They're saying, no, this is our map. We'll take it. Thank you very much. Tough gunshots here as metals and accuracy are in a really tough argument over the top of Palms, but Awakening is there to kind of quell any further play. And with that, Minnesota stopped the clock as they start to make some progress on it. Yeah, and they have a lot of map control as well. You have bridge side. You currently have top red as well. So Eric Boom just trying to play for at least one kill, and he might be able to earn it. Nope. The shots in the back from Vivid is able to keep his teammate alive. But the first segment does get complete. Okay. Now Minnesota find a couple kills in the feed. Now it's time to hit that go button. Let's try to get over towards B and hit that early transition. But, but Vivid gets cut down. Linz is going to get red on the flank. He does find that kill, but now Miami are going to get all those close spawns over towards Cafe. It falls into the hands of uh, Eric Boom, who finds two, shuts down that pressure. So it's going to be time extended, but Miami ready for the push. Yeah, absolutely massive double kill, though, by the way, from Eric Boom. I mean, because Linz is just out here just trying to keep Miami's defense spawning all the way out. But without any actual pressure on this B zone, Miami can essentially just take their time, clear things out. If they can, Lin's on five in a row. Now all of a sudden he could try to hit this, but shot at over the top. Lucky trying to challenge, and that will be enough to shut things down. And in the meantime, it's Vico over the middle of the map to shut down Rocker trying to hit from the front. So all of a sudden, what looked to be a good setup for Rocker gets completely foiled, and now they're under threat of being spawn trapped. At least if you, at least if you're our Minnesota Rocker, you have red control, so you can decide to fight right through the front end. But these next couple of fights are going to be massive. Because if you lose them, you allow Miami to put you in that trap, force you to now overextend up through Coop's side, and they don't find oh. any kills in the feed. Last player up is going to be Awakening. He does take down Eric Boom, gets a read on some medals, able to open up that avenue for his teammates to sprint right through forward. This is all out mixed mix fest in towards Junk, and it's still Minnesota getting those close pawns to reinforce quickly. And Vivid may just hop on the zone right here and stop the clock. As just continually labored 1v1s in front of the zone. Linz tagged up, finally finished off by Metals. Eric still watching on the cross. Vivid eventually gets taken down. And yep, here we go again. Miami just not content at holding still, but I mean, they are pushing every given moment they can. They're trying to win back these key positions on the map. And so far, it's been very successful for them. 11 v 11, 40 seconds of the clock to go. And now if you are Minnesota, you have some map control. You already pushed up in towards red. You found an initial two fights. All you have to do is eliminate these last couple of players before the rest of the cavalry jumps over that half wall. Wow. It's all about these fights. Unfortunately, they do not come out on top in the trade engagement. Miami up close and personal with those SMGs. They prefer those gunfights. With only 20 seconds left, Minnesota, this is your last push. Yep, absolutely. Even players coming off spawn will have to go in one by one. So this was the last concentrated hit for Minnesota. Vivid dealt with immediately. Trade quickly there, though, from Lens. Follow up from Metals. It just feels like everything is being covered. I mean, give me a break. Miami just... 
an absolute resurgence in these last two series. They'll get the series done 3-0 with a very clean 3-1. And Minnesota just continue to have question marks looming as now all of a sudden Miami's hopes on a winner bracket are very much so alive. Unbelievable that we just said that with any certain certainty. That's insane, man. They have just came out the last two weeks and played some really good Call of Duty. We're talking about fixing your mistakes on Rio HP, where they thought in the back of their mind, there's no reason why we should be 0-3. This is one of those bread and butter maps for us. We just have to figure it out. And when you figure out those rotations, you're going to find success on map number one. But the fact that they walked into a high-rise S&D, which was game mode number two, and they've only played it one time, and that was versus Atlanta, probably a couple months back they walked away with a clean 6-4 versus a minnesota rocker who were undefeated on that map they yeah, usually do yeah. not have any openings but when you allow lucky to just pop take over drop 15 and 4 absolutely dominates in that map number two and then Map number three, this was Minnesota's bread and butter control. Yep. We're talking yep. about Karachi, where they used to be one of the best teams on defense. They started to slowly figure out their attacking round, so no one wanted to square up with them on Karachi control. But Miami said, no, nope, screw that. We're already feeling great. We're going to play you on your best control map. We have the SMGs who are always applying the pressure. And I just think if you're a Minnesota rocker, it's going to come back to bite you because you had a lot of situations where you could have hit that rotation quickly over towards the next side. But every single time you tried to do that, there was a player from Miami contesting you, finding two and then shutting down that play every single time miami just came to play today man clean 3-0 from them i think we may have to do like a brief little analysis on this miami <laughs> stage two qualifiers because losses to toronto atlanta new york were pretty bad but a map yeah. five loss to vegas a map five loss to la thieves now two wins maybe we're sleeping on this miami team a little bit but we'll let the desk talk about it after the 3-0 comes through and the heretics still have upper bracket hopes alive not just upper bracket hopes, I was doing some of the math here, Nameless. So with Carolina losing 0-3, that means that Carolina finishes with 11 map wins, 17 map losses. With the 3-0 from Miami, they now have 11 map wins, 16 map losses, a better map win percentage, and would have the A seed over Carolina in Puckett's current math bracket. I mean, with the way Miami has taken us on this roller coaster, I wouldn't even be shocked at this point. I mean, they played insane today. I honestly thinking that Rio Hardpoint was there first. That was probably the only map this entire qualifier Miami has shown any life on. I think that might have been a misstep by Minnesota Rocker allowing oh. that through. However, I will say to that point, even though Minnesota were heavily outplayed and rotated in the beginning, they started to make a case for themselves around the second set of rotations. However, Eric Boom was a two-piece machine. Even though he ended even every single life almost, when he got a two-piece, it was to save the last 20 seconds of scrap time, or it was on the rotation. It was some of the most important kills Clutch. of the game. Yeah, I mean, I think Minnesota was very happy with the maps that you heard. You know, studying shift going through it, I totally agree with them. Like, this was a series set up for them to win, and they botch it again. Like, these little moments, maps one and two. Let's talk about the first one, for example, Rio. They're in a great situation. It's rotating over towards Lobby Hill. They send only Vivid up the middle of the map. He loses his gunfight, and from there, we all played Rio. You know how it goes. You lose P3, you're likely losing P4 as well, especially when you're at a deficit. It's so hard to break. We get to the SD. They have a 4 2 lead, guys. They're in a great spot. They have bomb down at B, all four players alive, and you get picked one by one to get retaken. These things can't happen. On the flip side of that, the turnaround from Miami, incredible, man. Like, these guys have looked so much better, and in this series, it was a statement. Like, we deserve to be in this league. They did make a statement, especially their leader. Let's take a look at your scuff play of the game. It's Young Lucky. Not even 25 yet, and he's still putting up 14 plus kills. I mean, this search is right was insane. The biggest change, like Nameless touched on it, was 4 2. End up winning a round, going to 4 3. It should have been a Minnesota Rocker win to go 5 to 3. Round number 8, but it is lucky. They are in a 2v3, and he yeah, see three players. Like, he had no reason to get that final kill on Awakening. He had no reason to stay alive right here. We're actually watching in front of us, and he gets the three piece, and that is all Miami needs to solidify the win on this map. Yeah, picks up the cruise. The Man was taking over. I mean, after the first three rounds, he had nine kills. Like, yep. he literally was going off, and that's kind of what you need, man. You're playing a high rise, and Matt Minnesota has been good at. You take that up 2-0, you're going to bring that momentum. And we saw in stage one how good they were at Karachi Control. Seems like it's back. We now have our monster winner spotlight with a spotlight on Vico. Welcome back to the show, my guy. The one player returning from the Mutineers. Now the Heretics joins us live. And Big Vic, we're coming home. 
to Miami next weekend. You guys have a chance of playing in the winner's bracket after that 3-0. What's the talk like in the camp right now? Um, I'm pretty sure doing the math, you know, my dad is a big math guy, so he told me um, if Carolina lost and we beat Rocker, we would secure winner's bracket. I trust my dad, so I think we... Uh, we secured pretty, uh, we secured winners bracket, so we're pretty happy about it. You know, oh. um, big win from us, and I'm looking forward for next week. Shout out to Daddy Vico, yeah. following along, <laughs> doing the math for you every match. Vico, congratulations on this win, and congratulations on securing winners bracket. Uh, you know, I was one of those people kind of screaming from last beginning of the season. You know, having you guys come back to the league, haven't seen you since Black Ops 4. You know, starting major two qualifiers wasn't what you guys would have hoped for, and so I start, I stopped believing in you. I think some of us did, but now you guys are back. Do you have anything that you want to say to the Miami fans as you are heading into Miami next week? Um, shout out to everyone that stayed on our side for when we were 0 and 5. You know, um, Eric is still adjusting to the league. You know, it's uh, being on the big screen is not easy. So he's been uh, working on on himself, on his confidence, and he's been looking so much better. And that has helped us all overall, overall in in practice and in these last two matches. So um, I'm hoping our rookie of the of the season keeps up with us because he's gonna he's gonna show up online and we're gonna do great things. And thank you to all the fans that stayed on our corner um we didn't take any of you for granted so appreciate all of you and we love you uh javi vamos man you guys have righted this ship what do you attribute that to what was the change in the gameplay because you guys have completely turned it around in this last week i mean i think eric mentioned it last week our practice wasn't going uh bad at all um you know the top four teams are still you know the top four so they they give us really hard practice, but the rest of the teams in general, we were pretty like um, we're winning most scrims. We're we're working uh, hard against like against everyone, and I think it was just uh, making sure that um, we translated our practice into games. You know, I feel like the top four teams. Uh, I think we played three of them. Um, just are on top, so they beat us really easily. But it was a close loss against Vegas, a close loss against Thieves, and um, I mean. We just had like that little, um, you know, zone to to pass, and we did that these last two matches, so we're happy about it. Vico, final question for you. I need to ask a favor for our editor. Can you please just look into your camera and say "Welcome to Miami" in Spanish? <laughs> Bienvenidos a Miami. You're welcome, editor. There we go. That is Vico. That's your monster winner spotlight, and we will see you on land in the winners bracket next week. Have a good day, guys. Thank See you. you. Didn't think those words were coming out of my mouth. Miami winner's bracket today has been wild, and we still have four matches before these qualifiers are finished. Yes, and we have one of the craziest ones at the end of the day tomorrow, but there's still one on the other side of this break. LA Thieves could steal a top four seed, but they got to battle through Toronto. Can Envoy and crew keep it going, or is it LA Thieves and Dan Ghosty getting some revenge? Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League pack. Grab yourself the CDL operator, weapon blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. My best memory competing is probably um, last year with the Florida Mutineers, um, beating, playing Optic in the main stage in the first event. We lost against them 3-2, but then we had the opportunity to play them again the day after, and beating them 3-2 uh, was a really good memory for me. Talk about aggression, Rocker, four players over towards A. Zoinks! There's the second. 
from Alex. Third for Alex. Oh! Fourth from Alex, Alex we too. Missed we missed it. Oh, one's one's MP5. Got him. One's back garage, one back to garage, two to the garage, two to the garage, two to the garage, garage, dead. Last guy's on point. One shot time. Got him. He, he's he's got to be so happy. He finally doesn't have to worry about You're like a, getting first blooded in round 11 on his team. You're like an adamantium werewolf. Oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> He couldn't get out, but he can do front flips. <laughs> oh, Daddy's hungry! Oh my God! Finally takes him out, but oh, he dog, got... it's dog on dog warfare. No! <laughs> that was the most intense round of S and D that I've ever casted in my damn life. Dead, 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 dead. Nice, 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 nice. I'm good. Nice as. Oh, no, 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 he peeked over. He peeked over. Get the hit, the hit, the rest dead. Get the hit, the hit, the rest dead. Watch out, watch out, watch out. I'm really weak here. Yeah. Popping plates. Yeah, play down, play down, play down. Yep. I am. Oh, dude, I... I'm coming. Nico, you might take be able to get me. Take a risk, take a risk. Up top, up top, up top. 3v1, 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 3v1. Oh, my God! 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 Taking down Vegas, Miami, Minnesota, and LAG with a 12 and 3 map count. It's now been a slide here for the Toronto Ultra. They've fallen 0 3 to the Atlanta phase, and most recently, a 2 3 game 5 loss to Optic Texas. They're still the number one team if you're looking at our overall standings. Where are they at currently in your book, Allie? Uh, they're still top four in my book right now. It's just the fact that their search and destroy has taken a huge hit when it comes to this qualifier. We're talking about two egregious losses to Opted Texas in a 6-06 Karachi and a 1-6 Terminal map. That Toronto Old Trap typically been extremely confident on. So heading into the series, they are going against an LA Thieves team that has actually been uh, seen to find success in the search and destroy. So they could be caught lacking early in the series. I agree. I, I think that this series in Search and Destroy, I, I feel like LA Thieves actually has the edge. You know, there's a lot of like small things Toronto has been dropping the ball on. I mean, they allow the they allow teams to plant at an alarming rate. They're actually second to last in the league in that, and then they can't retake. They're third uh, to last in the league in retaking as well. So defense and, and S and D need some work, and then also the control. Three and three in that game mode hasn't been the best. They've had some tough competition. You can see for the Monster Energy pregame, sort of yep. reiterating the S and D does look vulnerable in the last One and five. Four. It hasn't been great, man. And the defense, like I said, not great as well. That, of course, is Toronto Ultra locking in and controlling. You could be coming away with your fifth win here in stage two. On the other side of this fight, though, it's not going to be an easy battle because you're going up against a squad that has been surging as of late. Let's break down the LA Thieves. Dan Ghosty and Afro now joined by Nasty and Krimp. And since this squad has merged together, a 4-2 and two record with their only losses to Optic and ATL. Yeah, they've been finding a lot of sex success when it comes to the search and destroy. Hey but I think in the hard point, it's been a 
a little wishy-washy. It's been kind of on okay. both sides of the scale. And the problem with that is that they're going against Toronto, which is still disgusting in Hardpoint. Don't get it messed up. They are still top three when it comes to that game mode. And though LA Thieves, though, when it comes to Monster Energy pregames, it still continues to improve. Three-game win streak, respectfully, though, those Hardpoint wins are against teams like LAG. I mean, this is the team that was 1-12 and at Hardpoint in Stage 1. They're now 5-5. Five and five. They've been playing great in that game mode. And that was the first time we saw them play sub-base with this roster. And they looked unbelievable yesterday. So uh, in this series, they're going to have to lock up both destinies. And they have to find a way to win a respawn. And I think it's going to actually have to be sub-base. Toronto haven't played it this split. And Thieves got to play it yesterday where they looked incredible. So as our maps and modes come up here, there is opportunity in this series for LA Thieves. Karachi control instead of invasion control control though whenever we're watching LA Thieves win a game three it seems to be on a certain map. Yeah for LA Thieves there wasn't much they could do about the control in this series I could, as you can see that's going to be a high rise ban from side of Toronto and that's the only control that LA Thieves have been comfortable on and obviously given the choice they're going to now have to play Karachi which Toronto is 6-1 and one on. There you have it it's time to get our scuff predictions in and all signs are pointing to another LA Thieves oh, just kidding it's Toronto winning today. I agree. Just kidding. Yeah, no, yeah. it's Toronto. Toronto, today. Toronto, yeah, Toronto, 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 Toronto. All Toronto fans are going Toronto. They're the number one seeded team in the game, fighting for a top four seed with a win here tonight. We'll find out if they can get it done. We got Miles back on the mic with Chance. Miles, you ready for this one? I'm ready for this one, Chris. You can't get rid of Chance and I. We're like furniture around these parts. We've seemingly working uh, all the matches. It feels great, though, guys. You look fantastic, Desk. What a lovely day of Call of Duty so far. And who knows? This could be another uh, Swift 3-0 if the pundits are right. But let's find out if LA Thieves Chance have got what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Toronto team. And that is like the true test that they get. It's kind of perfect for LA Thieves as well, even if you're not expecting them to win this matchup. They've had a very successful stage two qualifying stage. And the final match they play before they go on land is against one of the best, if not the best team in the game. So their final rep is going to be the best possible practice you can get. You need to go toe to toe and see exactly where you stand. And obviously, I mean, we talked about the maps just a little bit. Hold your stealth animal if you're scared, because there's going to be some new ones for some of these teams, even <laughs> kicking it off on a real hard point. It can be dangerous. The three and one record for Ultra SMGs can be a menace. And Scrap, well, he's the third SMG on this map. He's been doing outstanding uh, for him, as is tradition. There we go. Well, that is uh, a very dangerous stat line to see if you're an LA Thieves fan. Let's find out how the actual match goes. Here we go. Toronto Ultra, LA Thieves, map number one. We fly into Rio. And the nades and the stuns are out as P1 is an absolute mess on this map. And LA Thieves, chance they get the first two. Always nice when you get the nade kills off the opening break. Makes your job that much easier. I know Kleenex was just cracking jokes about it, but him and Insight talking about getting Cammy's trade. So it's maybe a little bit of extra spice in this series for him. But for the moment, Thieves, great job inside the hill. Of course, well, that moment has dissipated. That's a clean form, man. Wipe and the bad spawns for LA Ultra. Now I have the map on a stranglehold. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll see how long the stranglehold lasts. LA Thieves, there's too much air in the lungs for them to tap out now. Over to Insight, though. That lovely three spree continues. Final 15 here of P1 should go to the boys in purple. Pressure there now from Ghosty. Flying on through, but it's Envoy there with that submachine. And the rival nine, an absolute weapon here in MW3. I love the decision from Envoy, too. Instead of chasing the kill, stays around the time. Ghosty makes the play, though. Picks up a two-piece towards the middle of the map. So you might be quick on this P2 break. I mean, Toronto Ultra basically turtle up around the hill. You got flanks coming through. Afro porting on the pressure, but Ultra, they alleviate the pressure on the Back in Kleenex gets the two piece on pillars and the tight setup reigns supreme. LA Thieves, they are back to square one. There we go. Why spin it? Solid chunk of time gunner in the first for LA Thieves. Now over to the second hard point. And the hot dog stand is open for business. Insight on the back line can't get any more. Ghosty increment the feed. Pressure now on scrap. How many can you take with you? Just one. Oh boy, wins the fight. That's Toronto Ultra's hard point still. That is so tough, too. Yeah, Krem gets that extra one, and maybe he could have, you know, slightly gotten back in the game. Not too shabby on the score front for the moment. LA Thieves certainly want to keep the pressure, keep these players at bay. Nasty doing a good job just staying alive, slowing these guys down, but eventually Ultra able to make that break. We're going to have a 40-second lead going towards new, and Envoy already taking a route with Kleenex, potentially thinking about flipping those spawns. And you see where Ghosty's dying on the map as well, so LA having to look so many directions at the same time. The pressure for Toronto, though, is still going to be working the flanks. Insight pierces his way through boxes. Just thinking about that contest. There it is. 
dips a toe. They know where he's coming from. The Thieves pounce. Three in the feed. Time's still going their way. Toronto, not too far away as reinforcements go. But number four is going to be the man of causing problems. Crimpno, the four spree is done. Afro now back on the stair line. Quick contest, in and out, Ultra keeping the LA Thieves on their toes. Nice shots out of Afro. Gets the second as well, 25 to go here on third. You'll take all that time if you can. And a big win from Envoy. He might be able to nick the deck 20. I mean, everything for LA was so good up until they don't get that one trade. Still had the opportunity to fight back on this time, but you just see the amount of damage output that Ultra are doing even when they're falling. And from Ultra, they got what they wanted. They do flip the spawns. You might not get that scrap time, and LA Thieves might have sort of evened up the, the score count, but you do want to be spawning on the left side of the map for this hill, but they don't have boxes controlling Afro, continuing to piece, slowing these players down, and goes to next man in line. He feels like the guarantee for the Thieves squad to get those trades. It's happening all over the map. LA Thieves nice and stable on this P4. Great shots as well. Dan Ghosty. The hard point's all his. This Kremp. He's finding the time. Bit of a pinch now from Ultra. Lead change. LA Thieves back in this one. Kleenex is going to send it. Easy trades here for the LA Thieves, boys. If they're able to make the play, they'll push their way forward. Oh, no. Insight gets his. Nasty's been pushed out of the hill now. Ultra have swarmed in, and that's a late break and a 20 solid second bit of time to have there. And Insight's so good, too. It's, like, so uncomfortable to play against him because you know he's just going to be L-triggered, but when you feel the pressure from his teammates in, like, the backside of your spawn flanking, well, you're forced to make a move. You run into his irons. It is a dangerous place to be. Even now, Ultra are just setting up a gargantuan pinch. Envoy taking the ultimate route. He takes down Ghosty, and, well, the players on time are just food for fodder. Everybody getting wiped off the map, and Whoa. that is a literal perfect break coming out of Toronto Ultra. Envoy able to pick up four in sight on a four spree as well. Yeah, look at this. Kleenex on the prowl now. Looking for these players off spawn. Tags in a ghosty. Enough to cause a bit of discourse in the lines of the LA Thieves. No stick. Over to the hard point. We go scrap. Takes care of Krem. Envoy now on the low side of the hard point. He's on a bit of a spree. It's a six. Comes to a close. Lovely work, though. He has the cruise. Uh, the crew is going to come in a uh, pretty big impact on quite a few of these hills. So easy to utilize. We'll see how they can pay off with it. But even without the crews for the moment, this has been a beautiful hold of this hardpoint hill. They have run the score up. And again, it all started off the back of just a monster pinch coming in from Envoy. So game winning plays for the moment, albeit just for a 50 point lead on the reset. But staying ahead of the game, Ultra, they are going to be the first team to the new top. Massacre across the map. The LA Thieves, they mop up the remaining defending players of Toronto Ultra in these old points. But on boy, oh, oh my dear. god, he's got another pair. 18 and 10, still with the crews to play. Magnificent workout of Toronto Ultra. Let's go for a listen in. Help, help, Toby. I have a chop. Nice. I have a chop. Two two yeah, I have you close. Run up. Huge crap. One shot. Crimp one shot. There's two in here. I'll come get you. Yeah. Both there, both there. It's all good. What's coming you now? Yeah, and then one security. Two yeah. shot. Two shot to you. Chop we. Three at old. No right, right now. Push that cat, maybe? Is that me? Yeah, yo, it's bathrooms, bathrooms. Bathrooms? Yep. They're playing out. Pop skis too. He could have pinched bathrooms. Yeah, I think he did. Cool. Shot, bathrooms, 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 dead. Nice. I'm gonna nice hit one front. Close yeah, we should hit front, fast. We're gonna hit front. Shop for me, shop for me. Shop for me, dead. I'm absolutely still. still. Last one still. Still. I'm just giving him up, bro. Yeah, that's fine. Shoot one here. Cap, no? Uh, it's still my leg. Look at my deep pinch, just in case. The one in the back of me. Stun him in the back. Yeah. One shot dead. I'm one shot. Yeah, one, more, one more close. Close. Shop, 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 one shot. Still back there. Yeah, shop, shop, shop. Shop. Shop and hold, I think. Shop's still pushed out. I spawned. I think. Might spawn in front of us. Never mind. Okay, Cap then. I'll hold pinch. I'll hold pinch. Dark. Shop now. Shop in. Dead. Nice. Dark too. Ghosty. Ghosty. Yeah, what should we gate? Don't shot me. Half full. Time. Not close. That's it. Time. Just spawn behind us. Gate. It's already out. Half full dead. Gate. Gate. Gate dead. My suit. One half full. On the left side. One shot. I'm so weak. It's uh. Push. Go see, go see on the half wall. I'm so. Oh, he dropped down, bro. Cramp, 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 shot. Cramp, cramp, hot dog. Nice. Keep sliding. Got dog now. I'm holding the big cave right now. Dog dead. I'm playing new. I just want to go ahead. Come on here. Yeah, I have a cramp. Stop me. One shot on the half wall. Lane down. Two, two, two. One jumping up top and then one close. Dead. One more. Go new, bro. He's on the half wall again. Still not pushed. Nice. We more. I spawned pretty deep. I have a tree. One already whale. He went there. I spawned garage. I'm making him so up, bro. Yeah. Already. I hit my killer. He whale. He whale and one cross caution. I spawned garage. Like whale. Whale is absolutely dead. Afro it, here as well, no? Look like you, Rocha. One more stun, caution. Hey, caution window, there's two. In caution, we nothing, nothing will blitz. Nothing will blitz. All four, all four. And Toronto Ultra with the fantastic comms there. Continuous problem solving in this ever shifting Rubik's Cube that is Rio. And now.
now it's just like well the bigger problem for our latest solve you got to break this setup down it is going to be absurdly difficult inside has had an incredibly comfortable game he's dealing with the pressure from the entire team nasty is able to pick up two Maybe that can soften up the push just a bit. You're running into a blender, though, and Kleenex and Insight together. Well, they just body you. It's an 80-point lead. You are back again to square one, spawning so far away. Looking like they're not going to be able to get this time. Uh, no, not at all. It's magnificent brick wall of defense here. Or oh, wait a minute. <laughs> well, the LA thieves are in. Getting ready to wax lyrical about impenetrable situations. They are inside the point. Next bit of time is all theirs. Rotation down as well. And what a turn of events this is. Old hard point time is about to be lost there. Ultra will take that. But now the setup once again towards the garage side of the map here on Rio for the thieves. Oh, they never actually got boxes control, so you can see the pressure. Ultra players literally swarming everywhere. It is two players around the hill that have to look every direction. Cramp might be able to pick up two, but they were not able to keep these ultra players at bay. An instantaneous break in. A small opportunity they might have had has been quelled. And now, of course, in sight, maybe a victory lap with the crews. Players are spawning distantly. You got all your bases covered. Number six, Cramp, going to be going on a flank, but his teammates in the meantime seemingly getting picked apart. Death from above, either way. Another spree developing here for the Ultra Boys. And this time it's Kleenex. Will he get a cruise? One more. And nope, Nasty ends him. 222 climbing though. We are looking towards the business end of the game. And we're still on control of the hard point for Ultra Insight there with the Renetti. It's not going to end here. But my God, he is absolutely melting these players right now. I, it just looks so easy for him too. Every single kill Insight's been collecting. He's just L triggered shooting players underneath cars. They're running into the irons. And I mean, again, he has just been coasting with that hoodie up. Now, of course, though, we're having a, a similar situation. LA, get to the hill first, but you already see the idea of maybe setting up for another massive pinch. Of course, Insight can be out of the picture for a little bit, but they are just taking a deep route, waiting to set up for the kill. And it's because they got the cruise missile to roll through. Question is, who does Envoy want to kill? Get the guy out of time. See you later, Dan Ghosty. It's all got time, though. Ah, no, you're running out of reinforcements. Thieves' numbers dwindling. Scrap now on the pinch. Picks up his own. Final few seconds here. Nasty will get one. Consolation. Can he get the player at the time? Has to move. Has to fly. Gets it. Safe for now. Kleenex still in play. And this hard point is nearly done. Last ditch attempt now from the LA Thieves. Yeah, well, they have the cutoffs, right? Player over by top vending. Opportunity maybe to work the flank. Scrap gonna hear that from a mile away, though. But really on this rotation, I guess LA, they have to do two things, right? It's only three seconds. You gotta keep them out of old time and rotate towards new. As he goes on a spree, but maybe too little too late. Trying to stabilize. You still have P1 control. So LA Thieves are certainly bringing the fight. Ultra, though, it's just a matter of time. You feel like before they break it down. Oh, no way. Oh, boy. Nearly gets one there on the pin. Shafro wins a big one over the Kleenex now. Can he get his? And this is to end the map. Potentially another one-on-one -on -one engagement. Afro this time gives Dokan Ghosty a taste of his own medicine. Still alive and kicking. Envoy wins the fight. That should be the map. It should be done. No. Another contest. My God. It just won't end. Right, that's he's popping off. He's had a great, like, past few hills. He was struggling early, but now bringing a little bit towards the, the table. Still, though, you have so many things on the map that you actually have to do. You want to flip the ultra players out. And again, just for the fact that there's one second, anyone on Toronto want to break this hill in the final moments. They are going for the swarm. Two man down on the feet. Nasty, one of the last man on defense. It is not going to last. Ghosty versus the world. Can't get it done. And ultra finally close out map number one. My God. Wow, the LA Thieves proving that when the chips are down, they were not out of it. If they had that same resolve to sort of the middle of the map, this might have been a far closer Rio hard point. But you're absolutely going to need to rehydrate after that one, lads. That was a sweaty one. Nice start to the series. Ultra, take the lead. I can't tell if Insight looks sick or maybe just a little bit bored, but either way, he was as focused as he needed to be in the map one because it was very comfortable from start to finish. 31 and 18, 5,400 damage. Uh, it really did seem like any time we were watching his point of view, it was just very comfortable, very easy. The kills falling into his lap. And as I know you touched on it when the listening ended, they're just a paranoid team. But like, that's how safe you have to play in this game. It was a constant string of like, I think they're spawning here. I'm not sure. I'm still going to watch the pinch. Okay, is this what's happening on? I don't know. Just in case, just focus on this. And they are always making sure that they are paying attention to every little possibility that can happen on Rio. And 
things under control for the majority of the game. Efficient work out of Ultra. Hey, great job. Again, Ultra, this that communication style of eliminating all possibilities. Whatever remains, however improbable, is the truth, my dear Watson. And there you go. They find the spawns of these members of the Thieves. They put, apply the pressure. And once they really got things going, there was no looking back for Ultra. They were just so, so strong. Three sets of streaks, massive runs individually. And as far as the time goes, I mean, the stats showed it. Wonderful work in the assist department as well. All bases covered there for Toronto Ultra. A spicy start. And the LA Thieves, again, kudos to them. A very strong showing, especially towards the late game there. But many will be questioning, was that a strong showing from the Thieves or was that a sort of moment of relaxation from Ultra? Because let's face it, by the time we got to that moment in time, the finish line was so close, they could barely, barely lose it. I did have a quick look at the weather charts. The reason why Insight's probably wearing that hoodie is because it is quite cold up north at the moment. Our current kings of the north are enjoying a chill in the weather department. Over in LA, though, it is not cold. Let me tell you that, boys and girls. We're sweating over here in my little studio. Better go to high rise and try to catch some of that sweet, sweet high altitude air. Search and destroy coming up next. A commentator of the year at one point in time and a meteorologist. Who knew? A man of many oh, talents, Miles. The gas, mate. The gas. Not shocked by this, but what I am shocked a little bit by is the high rise S and D. It's a, you know, it's the first time LA Thieves have played it all year brand new for these guys on that front and then of course for ultra it is only the second time that they have played this map all year so uh, a bit of a surprise to see but of course i know the theme from ultra basically this entire stage has either been working on the map pool which they've been spamming real hard point and s and d seemingly at every given opportunity or even when ultra are playing against the other best teams in the game they're squaring up and going against them on their best map so these two teams looking for the experience Looking for those reps and deep in that map pool as much as possible. But SD has been an interesting thing for Ultra because they have been getting slammed as of late, like ninth overall on the uh, opening dual win front. Their conversion is still fantastic when they're getting the bloods, but I know they've gotten, you know, double 6 0 or 6 0 by Optic at one point, 6 1 on another front. Ultra has been on the, uh, the positive and negative end of quite a few 6 0s in SD this year. Of course, now it's a brand new map for them, so we'll get that look on high rise to see, see exactly where their head's at. Yeah, I mean, right now everyone's head seems pretty cool. It's uh, an air of sort of calm but focused anxiety there for the LA Thieves. It has been a very difficult run of things as of recent. Either J Cap or Shane there, just keeping the boys hydrated. Playing out of the Cash App compound here in Los Angeles. Can the LA Thieves turn around what has been a difficult season so far? Adding crimp to the roster has definitely given them an, a, a nice sort of bump of firepower, as have Nasty. But is it enough to get the team together? Time is the only sort of thing they've really got now that they're running out of. That major is next week. There's no room for mistakes here. For Ultra, again, you have to see them coming into the tournament as an absolute clear-cut favorite. There is no doubt about it. Here we go, though. Fist bumps are done. It's time to get to high rise. And this is a map that, you know, I'm very curious as how, how Ultra is going to be playing it. I think their 0-1 record, it might have been like one of the first or second S&Ds they played all year now that I think about it. Because I'm re-remembering the analysis I was giving at the start of like Envoy's a player, loves to go on the flanks, the underground routes, he might go for the domination, but they ended up losing it in a 6-4 fashion. And well, for s and it's been a struggle point for Ultra. For Afro, it's been his uh, time to shine. s and has been his bread and butter so far throughout stage two, 0.85 kills per round towards the top of the league. If you're 0.9 or above, you're feeling fantastic, and he is just underneath that margin. So Afro's a player to look out for, but talk about the underground domination. These fights can really set the tone. Kleenex maybe versus Afro down low if anyone overcommits. No one's committing nothing whatsoever. This relationship will not get very far. So we're meant to play it, and no one really seeing too much. Here comes a commitment towards the B Street. Finally, the Ultra Boys looking to take things a bit more seriously as they're making their way forward. Scrap on the outside. Will he be able to catch Ghosty? He caught wind of it. Oh, on the other side of the map now, tags either side. This is going to be the start of the round now. 45 seconds to go. Oh, and they're going for the bomb plant straight away. So a four versus four with the bomb plant and Ghosty is going to fall. Ultra finding all of the kills and Afro. Well, he's made his way towards the bomb. Two players up top, good shots, but still a man disadvantage. He's waiting for Nasty to get in the mix, but Ultra players are crawling all over the map. There is nowhere you can go. That is an efficient first round outside of the smooth moves. Afro 
Well, his teammate saw him, but he did it in a little bit too late. Ultra dominant in round number one. Yeah, without any sort of pressure on the map, Ultra just creep in towards that bomb site, scrap the man and get the bomb down AS. Or he gets the first blood actually as they get that bomb down ASAP. And after that, it's curtains. There's no hope. Even the gun skill of the LA Thieves not enough to save them then. Toronto Ultra laying the foundations for the round win there in the first. And again, just incredibly efficient. No time wasted. I mean, good stun and uh, nade usage as well just to go for the clearance. And as soon as they found that opening, no time wasted. Now LA Thieves turn on the attack and... I assume a lot of standard stuff is going to be coming out. Ghosty, actually the bomb carrier for the squad. That means your SMGs are going to want to be making plays. And or, then Ghosty will just find an exploding propane tank in its envoy last man standing. Somehow gets the second kill. Afro too busy running, not getting the trades. And for what could be the first one versus four, I believe, of the year. Here's Dylan Envoy. Oh! Nearly. I was hesitant to say anything there, but Ghosty knows a steal. Keeps it all together. LA Thieves bounce back, but hey, man. Yet to get a, yet to get a true 1v4, a true ace in that regard. As spicy as to possible. Tons, though, we've seen in our, our CDL ranked play clips. Keep those coming in, folks. CDL TV is absolutely popping. Thieves, though. Good looks out of them. Let's see if they can keep it going. And on the flip side for Ultra, uh, this is only their second time they've played this map. They might have forgot about that massive exploding propane <laughs> tank. It can be a problem from time to time. So uh, what a first blood there from Dan Gosey in the previous round. And yeah, if I'm Kleenex, blow up the barrel. See if you get free too. I feel like we all forget about it, you know, and it hits at the worst possible times, especially here in search. And here goes another one, Afro. <laughs> oh, God. oh no, it's such a nightmare. Well, it's a 4v2. Kleenex technically gets the first blood. Massive advantage here for Ultra in the attacking round. Ghosty desperately trying to level it up. Not going to happen. Oh, my God. Pain in the ass. A colossal pain in the ass. Get that yeah, checked. These boys, these boys are shooting too. I think Dylan Envoy might uh, deserve the credit for that first blood. on yes. the, uh, I think Nasty got it, but it looked like that nade was an absolute peach. So yeah. uh, whether it be your team that gets the credit for the kill or Envoy, maybe good news takes one away for him if he was going to be playing for the cruise missile but either way absurdly dominant round on the attack there from ultra guns are singing sweet and envoy a map that you imagine can certainly be his playground he has been thriving thus far right now from ultra dodge massive exploding tanks LA, keep those nades up and more propane shenanigans in this map Marvin. oh yeah we might get it scrap now, this one's safe. You can be right next to this massive exploding barrel, and it's perfectly fine. But if you're far away from the other one, that's a problem. How dare you? Don't be too far away from Afro, though. 2 HP and a big win here in the round. He gets himself too nasty. He and Afro now versus Envoy and Kleenex. It is a submachine gun rival 9 throwdown here on High Rise. Bomb soon to be recovered. Hopefully. There we go, and Afro now. Oh, I think Envoy may have caught wind of the play. This could be a deciding kill. And that should be the round. Take it back, Nasty's no, he's got himself an MCW. Oh dear. Here's a moment of shenanigans chance. I do believe Envoy saw him though. No, he didn't. No, they absolutely saw him. They have to now. Do they? Maybe they didn't. That's actually they didn't? unreal. Unbelievable. He's gonna get his plant down. Nasty now puts himself in a situation where he might be able to get this done. Guns up at the ready, son. I hope you're at least in a position to take these fights. There goes the propane tank, so he's <laughs> got out. Yeah, they have no intel. This is super doable. Byron Plumridge has gone for a bit of a walkabout. Less than 30 seconds to go. Ah, Kleenex with the MCW. Perfect timing. The right weapon in the right place. Envoy there for the defuse. A moment there from Nasty to turn things around massively for the LA Thieves. NT, NT go next. Yeah, just uh, maybe slightly less ready for that gunfight than Kleenex was. So even with no information, just checking everything. Fantastic centering, fantastic awareness. And I got to say, Nasty has some of the best player reactions. Anytime he dies, he is always snapping all the way back in his chair. But that is the difficulty of playing against a team like Toronto. Even when the odds sort of work out for you. 
1v2 seeming like a near impossibility, even with Ultra struggles. Their conversion rate in these rounds, always fantastic when they get that man advantage. Yeah, they're learning very quickly about how to play high rise S&D. Envoy with the mid map coverage in case anyone gets a little bit antsy in mid and feels like taking that route. Perfect spread there across the map there from the Thieves boys on defense. Ultra stacking over towards A, waiting for a little bit of action. No fake smokes, no fake nays, just waiting for the gunny. Hello. This might be our first blood. Krem trying to stay alive. It's scrapped with the MCW at range. Wonderful damage, not enough for the kill. 50 to go. It's also just about the only information Ultra has. Everybody else on LAT have been very stagnant, so tough to read on these corners. Now you know Ghosty's in the back, but you see the spot Nasty's put himself in. If he ever gets the call out, they're planning on B. Nasty will swoop in with a free kill, and if you go down B Street, it might also be free. Envoy near bomb. Afro gets the kill, so the spot's right now still on point. A brilliant work there. The hit and run from the LA Thieves. Nasty's holding that street like his life depends on it. There he is, he gets his kill on the Kleenex. So this is a beautiful round there from the LA Thieves. They held their ground, they've held what they've got. Insight might be able to catch a couple of kills here, but a 3v1 at this hour, not likely. The Thieves, good round. That's a good setup as well. And I think the patience as well certainly pays off. If they start trying to make plays down the B Street, because you did have Toronto more or less leave it open. Like that was a pretty heavy stack over on the tarp side of the map, but LAT trusted in the comps, trusted in the setup and the patience, again, pays off. Nice round there from LA. We've also had back-to-back -back rounds of dodging those massive exploding propane tanks. So I love to see the adjustments from these pro teams. I mean, <laughs> when did the game come out? Oct late October, early November? 2009, I think. <laughs> we have some theory. You're not wrong, brother. Here we go, though. Nades up. Propane go boom. Frag grenades go boom. And soon the rival nines will go boom. Ooh, I mean, this might just be a free round. Unless number eight, number six can find like some early kills in the middle of the map. Kleenex is going to get maybe a free kill. Yep. And that's the guy with bomb. Kleenex is never going to expect it. Why would you even check it? But for LA Thieves, you have to wrap all the way back towards your spawn and find Kleenex in the meantime. Good luck. Have fun. But actually, they catch him out. There you go. So man advantage. You just got to go get that bomb. That's tough. Oh, nasty. Great timing there. Peaks. Pies the corner, catches out in sight. Last man up, Envoy. And they would have procured the ace previously. Oh my, he may have snuck through. Damage, no kill. Thieves with another strong round. And I gotta say, that's kind of a funny one too. I don't think you would ever expect A, Ghosty to be the bomb carrier and B, having to be the bomb carrier sitting in his own spawn while his entire team is pushed up like actually around the objective. I think if Kleenex was like heads up and privy to it, that would have been a free round from Ultra. Kleenex could have just sat in a corner in spawn, but uh, that is sort of an unreadable moment there from LA. So playing mind games. Some plays are uh, so bold, let's say. Let's use the word bold, not something else. It works out, you can't read it. Love that, the unreadables. Well, we're three to three here on High Rise. Things have turned around wonderfully here for our red clad warriors. Ghosty backs on up. A lot of damage dealt his teammate Krem and Ghosty now finding their respective kills gives the boys of LA a massive advantage. Insight fighting for his life for Toronto, trying to pull things back 3v2. Oh, Afro, I was going to say, he's been doing the scaffolding hot from both sides, though, and nearly had a freebie. Scrap able to stay alive, though, but with the man advantage, Afro doing the smart thing, backs down. Even Krem making sure to play on the same side of the map with his boys. Of course, though, the B side of the map wide open, but LA Thieves again just roaming together, running into a lot of fire, though. Insight with the tag, scrapped there for the cleanup, and I think now the Ultra Boys know exactly where everybody on LA is, and if we didn't know before, they certainly do now. Scrap, even with the angle checks, that is an absurdly well-played two versus three. That is teamwork and chemistry that is out of control. That is the nerd spots as well for Scrap, going for the checks to spot the players pushing through blue. It does not get better than that for a clutch. That's fantastic work out of Scrap. Take notes, folks, back home, whether it's the gunny or the hop checks to make sure you know exactly where that player is going. Feeding that information rapidly to his teammates, allowing them to pick up the kill. Ultra with a magnificent bounce back. I'm enjoying this high rise, by the way. A lot of fun. 
a lot of fun. It's been a good time. Yeah, I think it's, uh, we've had just about everything we could if Envoy clutched that one before. <laughs> but it delivered for a master class, but either way, Ultra, one round, advantage, and the first blood. Scrap, happy. Just to go for the challenge, Afro, thinking about a scaffolding route again. In the meantime, though, his teammates cleared up the extra kills towards Bomb, does get traded out by a nice nade. And for a two versus two, I think Afro had, he didn't get spotted. That's he spotted. Insane. Oh, no. Oh, it's a gunny. Gets away with his life. And now Insight slows things right down. Not necessarily looking the wrong way, but trying to reposition and catch one of these players out. Oh, we saw Ghosty. But Ghosty also saw him. It's the gunny of the thieves that prevails here, and they are starting to believe. I, I'm so cute. Did Am I crazy, or did Afro run directly in front of Insight's screen? And I don't think... I didn't, like... We have Codcasters, so it looked weird, but I think Insight just straight up didn't see him. But he, he did run it. directly across the center of his screen, did he not? He may have missed it. We'll have to go to VAR for that one. Yeah, that was that was ridiculous. <laughs> but for now, possibly a slight error, a millisecond of a mistake has cost Ultra the round. And with that, we're back to 4-4. Four, four. Nades up. Start the round with a bang. Well, trophy at least there from Ghosty just for the coverage. You see Krem being incredibly aggressive insight. I think has him on the intel front, but Nasty's making moves. Ooh. Or Krem, excuse me, working on the street. And this might just be a free kill for him. There you go. Set up for the kill. It's that next one. And he got out. LA Thieves, four versus two, man advantage. Afro, I mean, he's the shoulders. Tags. Looking for the reach out, but it's the coverage from his teammates again. The LA Thieves, the trust is there. The teamwork is there. They are toyed like a toy gut right now. Massive advantage. They're not giving it up whatsoever. St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, but an early celebration is not something you want to have in this round. Already ultra clutch one, two versus three, and this might be a two versus four. Envoy gets traded. Kleenex, last man standing, 30 seconds to work with. Going against Nasty and Ghosty. And if they're playing this distant, I mean, this is clutchable. It's not easy, but the possibility is there. They're expecting Kleenex to be schmoozing, but he's not. He's running an MCW with a bomb planted. Here we go. Oh, he's got it all. Kleenex. Oh, dear. A couple of tags in. Now you know he's got to be down low. 35 to go. Here's the race. Kleenex does not look the right way. Oh, but Ghosty doesn't commit. And now it's nearly a 1v1. Send it. Kleenex tagged up. Thank God Ghosty didn't make the move when he did. He bought his team the time and he bought them the round. Map point, LA Thieves. And that is, uh, I mean, look, the start of the round, fantastic there from LA Thieves. Get the first blood, get Kremp up the B Street. They're making moves. It got dangerous and I saw a look of disgust in Kleenex's face for Ghost to be flanking him from blue in that moment. But well played two versus one, swarming the map, covering your teammate there for the trades. It was awkward, but... It doesn't matter. You get the round win. And Nameless might have been correct. He did say he thinks LA Thieves might have a, uh, a bit of an advantage in the S&Ds. One round away. And that might just prove to be true. And they're switching things up. This time Afro is grabbing the bomb. Makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a very mobile player. I think last time we saw Afro really run the bomb quite regularly was back in Vanguard. I could be wrong. Nasty says, get that paperwork out of my face. Get me that gunfight, but both teams being rather pensive. It's the man, Afro, though, trying to move this bomb forward. They have to contend with the Kleenex doing the old Maven nipple balance. And Kleenex, you're in trouble. Are they going to check this? Krem checks it out. Afro gets the kill. First blood. Yeah, Kleenex had it. No one to help him there from underground. Envoy. Oh Timing God. is perfect. I would go for the assassination, but he's going for all the kills. Great damage done. He's got out. Not for long enough, though. Goes to get a hunt him in another man advantage from LA Thieves. Oh, this is no. for the map. This is for the map. To stay alive, man advantage. It's a pinch from the Ultra Boys. Krem's going to get the plant. Insight holding firm. Scrap roaming in the middle of the map. Here comes the engagement. Afro gives his boys the biggest advantage you could ask for. It's on the scrap now to win the 1v3. And it's not going to happen. The Thieves with the edge in S&D. Dude, Nameless called it. He was correct. And Thieves making plays as well. 
Now, a lot of the uh, the clutch situations got a little bit spicy, but on the first blood front, these guys were on point and more like often than not getting active on the map. I mean, running it down, taking your time, Afro finding just the middle of the map to be effectively wide open and maybe a little bit of luck on your side as well with the propane tanks and some of these early rounds, but that is fantastic execution. For the first look there we have from thieves on high rise and i mean credit the whole way around dan ghosty as his typical 10 kills 2200 damage cramp i might not have found all the kills but he just had six assists there in a search and destroy so he was certainly active on the map he administering some for his teammates so those two completely on point and i know nasty brought it back as well starts off 0 and 4 finishes off much stronger so Right for Thieves, they have forced it at least now to a map four. Karachi, one that is going to look very dangerous. Ultra have a six and one record overall, but sub base is another one of those that Ultra playing with the map pool just a bit. Just enough to play with our hopes and dreams of maybe going the distance with a map five. Do Ultra have what it takes to close this one out in our next control game? We will be seeing that sub base, whatever happens, folks. Or can the LA Thieves keep the momentum going and do the unthinkable, bring down the Toronto Titans? Ultra versus Thieves, and we get back after this break. game with the scuff the official controller of the call of duty league slice up your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store
ladies and gentlemen, that's right. We've got fidget spinners and memes taking place here in the Columbus, Ohio CDL studios. It is literally nonstop when everywhere you look, there's something happening, folks. So enjoy the view while you still can. We're almost ready to rock and roll into our next map in this exciting series, the final series of the day. And uh, we've got ourselves a little bit of a uh, little bit of a control play. Chance, I think you saw something there that looked quite fun. I was just trying to keep track of everything. There was so much going on. I didn't realize there was like a room in the front left of the shot as well. But there's a lot going on, including Major 2. Got to get your tickets. We're going to Miami very soon. Just a week away now. And of course, we're going to be able to watch all these wonderful teams in action. Just scan that QR code. Maybe play some ranked. Get the vibes flowing. Ready to go. Absolutely. Well, that QR code will be available on screen for a moment longer. The Miami Heretics hosting Major 2, presented by Gamergy. Come on down and maybe meet your favorite pro player. They might sign something for you or kiss your firstborn. Whatever you want. They're all very friendly and very accommodating. Best to catch them after a win, though. That's when they're really at their best. Here we go, though, folks. We find out who's best at this next map and mode in this exciting series. Toronto Ultra taking on the LA Thieves. We're going to Karachi and we're playing Control. And no second borns. I no love to the younger Absolutely siblings. Not. I'll Absolutely remember not. that. That's the I, uh, I was the first ball. Can I say, brother? Here we go. We can refer yeah, well, to that as the monster energy fountain from now on, I think, of this map. Should we do that, John? I'm down for that. I think the uh, the first born on this map, though, might have been Toronto Ultra. A 6-1 and one record overall. They've been fantastic. Offensive end, defensive end, it does not matter. These guys, absolute class. LA Thieves, certainly a tall task ahead of them, including off the opening break. The nades on point already slowing this push down. Slowing things right down to a snail's pace into the zone we crawl, and it's ghosty with man first in there. Whoa, okay. he reads Kleenex, and Kleenex absolutely eviscerates him. Nice, oh Shortstra, Afro. God. Marcus Reed, the West Midlands finest with a multi-kill. Yeah, Rival 9 can do that. That is absurd. Clean shots there from Afro. That's one of those moments where anytime Afro drops under a 1KD, I'm just like, how? Like, I see him when he shoots. He Like, an electric point of view, but... Maybe too twisted for his own good at times. Now in a situation where he is the only one on his team getting kills. He's 4-0 and getting hunted down as well. So not even a cruise missile going to roll through. And now you're getting spawn trapped. A lot of teams, or a lot of players in length, like to push out Coop's side of the map and actually give the other team good spawns. Toronto Ultra, though, they know how to play Envoy and Junk. They are putting them in the absolute blender trap. Kremp clearly stretched before today's match because he's throwing shoulders like no other over there by the archway. Long defensive lineup here. Only a single segment gone. Here comes the play. Kleenex, the trades are absolutely perfect. As the white and purple kill feed will soon dissipate. But that's a lovely bit of time now garnered. You're looking to close out the A zone. Kleenex now flying forward. Afro. Gun not needed. Envoy with the nade. Final 30 seconds here. And Ultra take the round. Yeah, I love the patience as well. I mean, you just have Kleenex set up for the flank, but instead of just dive bombing the guy that's on A, slowly going for the capture. Kleenex plays for the power positions, gets the two pieces. Well, easy reads for him. There's a four spree, and the only man stopping the clock is Ghosty over towards B, but he is completely by himself. His team, in the meantime, they have to get to this A zone. He's Ghosty. It's only a matter of time before he falls. There's the cleanup. He dragged two players back to him, though. Is it going to be enough to actually get this team the point? It might not look like it. Ultra still are keeping him off of it. Oh, my word. On a five. They line up. It should be enough time to get on there. No, Scrap stops them. No one close. Actually, really close. Oh, my word. Just the outside of the zone, but not able to dip a finger at Pinky into the A zone to stop the clock. Ultra, a very strong defensive round. Only two segments gained. I mean, that's a, a round of near perfection. Almost every decision that they made on the map completely on point. LA Thieves might have actually gotten out of like the blender spawn trap. But again, you're down on lives and you were just so far down on time that it doesn't make a difference. Also a great decision by Ultra, at least double chow uh, Ghosty when he's solo capping over on the B zone to make sure that no funny business happened. So completely on point in round number one and Kremp and Nasty, two and 12 combined. Not a fun start. It's Ultra. Well, they've safely made it to the A zone on the opening break. Yeah, two of them have. This is going to be a fast capture. First segment on its way out. They're halfway towards the bit of work that the Thieves in the first round. Oh, no. Oh, no. Afro unable to get any of those players out of the zone. So now the second segment is gone. Ghosty may find a two-piece, but you've already tied the effort that the LA Thieves made in the opening round. Ultra looking strong. This is going to be two minutes and 20 on the game clock. That is 
absolutely delightful help from Envoy as well. Protecting his teammate in the time. Pushes out a cut, says nobody's there. I'll go back and play the objective. So decision making still on point. Insight has found himself in a very precarious situation. But almost the unreadable. I don't know the last time LAT has actually spotted this player out. But as the kills are flowing their way, Insight. It's just about the timing going towards the back alley. Is the timing right? Yes, it is. Indeed, doesn't take a bullet. And now for LA Thieves. Good luck trying to break this one down. You go over the dumpster, you're going to have a bad time dealing with Insight. You go through mid. Well, no. here's Scrap. Oh, uh, no. Right. Scrap dealt with. Insight, last man alive on this side of the map, and the pressure is now on. Can he hold these players back? Nope, not a hope in hell. Now on Void okay. cutting the players through the middle, and that's going to be a nice bit of time burnt. That minute gain from the A zone is soon to be gone with a minute 30 to play on the clock. Ooh, interesting moves, but not quite able to get away. LA Thieves doing a nice job on the hunt to get these trades. Scrap gets traded out in Long Alley. Uh, Boy gets traded out top red, and now it's just about trying to set up that spawn trap, but patient play from Ultra. Kleenex might have found the move to get behind enemy lines. Everybody else up towards red, but okay. here's at least his first free kill. And now from LA, you broke this down once, but now you got to get past this dumpster again. Yeah. That's not very nice to call Kleenex a dumpster. He's absolutely dumping a truck on these boys. 10 and 6 with a minute on the game clock. Now pause. The B zone slowly captured. Ultra starting to fly on the offense. Damage in a ghosty. This could well be it. Double stack as well. All the kills flowing their way. No one trying to deal with the dumpster. And good pressure maybe from Asti up top, but he gets traded into Afro. Didn't shoot back. He ran into a double chow. It is the funnel system. It is the final moment of this round. You get through the blender once, but Ultra, I mean, they get it back straight away. And again, it is just perfect decision making. It is as soon as a single player gets the right timing to get towards that back alley. It is suffocating how on point these guys can be. Yeah, that was the absolute perfect execution of the B-Zone attack there. And Kleenex playing with patience and incredible trust in his teammates. That I've got my position. I'm cutting off a single lane of reinforcements. You guys find your kills. Find your positioning on the map. And when we're all ready, we'll capture the B-Zone together. That's exactly what happens in Toronto Ultra. Another decisive round so far in Karachi. Yeah, really good feel for the timing as well, right? Kleenex is looking at the dumpster. Nobody's there. Okay, long alley. Nobody's there. And eventually he just like isolates the final player coming through like tickets. So uh, their internal clock right now also on point. A B zone attack though. Insight, freebie kill number one. Kremp though, nice trades. Now you get some back alley pressure up. Of course though, Kremp not quite able to deliver. Nasty going to be forced to make the play, but Kleenex already just being annoying going for the flanks the coordination is there another opening break absolutely stuffed ultra as is tradition completely on point yeah this is the more sort of well not as too similar to the opening round we saw the massive defensive work that only saw the la thieves get two segments on a a the zone that typically falls the first this time round inside playing incredibly patiently one more moment allowing on to get into the fray oh my god afro deleted one segment down. Kremp now in trouble. Dylan Hannon, 15 and 8 on a force free. And look how quick he is, by the way, to like run back over towards Junk. Same thing with Kleenex number four, just to make sure you're blocking those close spawns, even when you get that three man wipe. So he might have ran into death, but the idea is there. Now Kleenex might have found the timing. He sees the players up top, goes for the objective first, oh and now he's team shotting with his boys, making sure you kill the guy top third. Try to get out of dodge and again right back to making sure that you are blocking that spawn to keep B nice and secure ultra down to the details they are doing everything right it's really outstanding teamwork you are not dealing with a single member of the ultra lineup at any moment they're an amorphous blob they are completely covering all angles at all times and this might be enough though the la thieves They've caught him in a brief moment of weakness. Is this enough to get in? No. You've let Scrap through. No. Ghosty. Oh. Wins a big pair. 17 and 10. And streaks. We're going to be. Yeah. Put this man in Yellowstone. He is old faithful for the squad. He has 18 kills. Two of his teammates don't have that combined. And it did pick 82. They can't get to 18. And Ghosty, criminal performance for the moment. He is letting it ride. That's an eight spree. He's in the back alley. He has a little bit of help from Afro as well. But two gunfights to still have to win on the front line. Ghosty finally gets shut down. At least Afro there for the trades. But here's number two and Insight, an easy one for him. 
LA Thieves not quite able to set up those kills in the same way. Well, Thieves, though, so still plenty of presence on the map so far. And Ghosty still with the streaks. Able to maybe soften up one of the two of these more powerful positions. Scrap those. Certs dominance from top of AC. Krem. Nice bit of work with Afro. The back line. Oh, not enough HP. Kleenex kills them both. Nasty through the front. Dealt with. That might be it. The streaks. Oh, dear. Is it enough? Fly forward. LA Thieves fly. These are the final moments of the map. And you got players in rat corners as well, playing the guarantees and Kleenex. So annoying okay. to deal with, chopping you down along the way, the extra bit of damage done, and nowhere you can go. The hottest of 3-0s on Karachi. There was a blistering moment there from Ghosty, but outside of that, it was not even close. Oh, the thieves have been stunned there in control. No search and destroy was a delight to watch. That one was all ultra from start to finish. My good God. But 2-1 here in our series. We're going to sub base. Dress appropriately, friends. This one should be an absolute banger. We'll take a quick look at the stats as this series continues, Chance, but that one was all ultra. I mean, that's just a prime example. I mean, you can read the stats. On board, yeah, 20 kills, absolutely fantastic performance. The SMG is having an absolute field day, but like it was just the efficiency of like, that is a clear cut example of all four players being on the exact same page at any given time to the point where every reaction was on point. I think in that final round, Kleenex might have just ran a circle from like middle map towards like top red through trunk and then going through that like mid alley flank. He did that like three separate times on the exact same life. Again, they are making sure they are always blocking the right spawns at the right time. Incredibly efficient work and certainly a team to be learned from on any given map, but especially Karachi control. That was destruction. Yeah, really. Back to that Kleenex play that really helped the boys when that attacking round. Massive work. That was that second. The third round again, once the stranglehold was in place, it's immaculate control from Toronto Ultra. They just know exactly where they need to be for one another. And it's not like you've got set positions for set players. It's a very fluid gameplay. Very, very much like water, my friends. You can fit it into a pot. You can make it crash against the waves. And Ultra absolutely drowned the thieves there on Karachi. Three to nothing. Say goodbye to control. We say highly hi. Sub base. And sub base again. Uh, another one of those interesting maps to see Ultra play. They have a 4-0 record on it. But they also haven't played it in like two months plus. So it has not been their go-to in stage two after the new hills and new spawns get brought to the table. So first look for them on sub base in quite some time. And for LA Thieves, a one and two record overall, but sort of a, a similar story. They played it once against LAG and looked fantastic, but otherwise we haven't seen them from them in such a long time. So at least a more recent rep coming out from Thieves and maybe that experience can go a long way. They need it to stay alive in the series. Trying to stay alive in the series and force the game five. Ranked play now sees sub base back as well, Chance. We had a good game yesterday where uh, I think most of the people we played against have totally forgotten how to how to play it. Yes. Thankfully, though, yes, they did. we get to watch it <laughs> on a weekly basis. So we've managed to keep our chops up. But uh, if you're in uh, if you're in ranked and sub base comes up, maybe hit breaking point, you know, go for a quick refresher on how spawns work. It's not an easy map to uh, to play, boys and girls. You can get absolutely choked, Slam. Teamy team stats, though, when it comes to the overall season, and there is a clear-cut advantage in the series. Yeah, well, again, old spawns in old hills coming in from Toronto hi, Ultra. Hi, 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 hi. I mean, you know, it, in January was the last time that they played it, and already sun's up. Spring is just around the corner. And that one sole win that LA Thieves had, they got it just the other day, literally yesterday, against LAG. Of course, the Gorillas, at least early in the year, certainly were a team that enjoyed themselves some sub base, but LA Thieves really took them to task. 250 to 105 for the victory. So I'd say as far as the map set goes, I know Nameless was optimistic for LA Thieves on the search and destroy front. That proved to be successful for map number two. If there was any semblance of an advantage in Hardpoint, this might be the map that you want to play Toronto on. Of course, though, they do have a perfect record. They're still scary. We just don't know how their practice has been in the meantime. That's very true. That's the Scuff Warehouse that has a huge crate of monster energy drink inside it. I'm surprised we didn't slap a logo on the side of that sub. That'd been quite fun as well. The Scuff Walkway there on the right-hand side. Another monster loading zone. That's where all the energy drinks go. One of that forklift right into your mouths. Here we go, boys and girls. It's a sub base. It's going to be a banger. And if it's not, oh, I can't control that. I can just hope it's going to be a fantastic matchup, and I'm sure it will be.
Also, some of the funnier stats we've seen. 13 and 6 overall there from Insight. Uh, that was indeed a hard point. Yeah, he pulled that off on Skid Row. So, if you're a main AR and you want to learn the right spots to play, Insight always a player to pay attention to. Opening break, though, kicking off. Krem, get a nice two kills. Ghosty at least staying alive and buying his teammates some time. Trying to get him in position. Krem for his third. He's able to get it. It might just be Krem versus the whole squad, but there you go. That standoff from Ghosty and Scrap. Ghosty coming out on top, and this is beautiful right now from the LA Thieves. Yeah, nice work. And again, Krem nowhere near full power right now. Look how far away he is from his monitor. If he gets closer and closer to that cam, that's how you can tell he's being even more dangerous and purposeful in game. Let's see how it goes, though. Insight on the break. Ghosty and Afro have got his trades. Thieves retain control. If you're looking for the power-ups on the LA Thieves players, pay attention to the tongue of Afro. It'll start making moves. The more locked he gets, the further it extends. I know Michael Jordan, sort of the predecessor of the tongue out. Afro, long way to go before that's a justified comparison because he gets chopped down on that rotation. LA Thieves might look beautiful on the first hill, but Ultra, complete map control they right now have on P2. Scrap is pushed so far up, he's almost guaranteed a free kill or two. Yeah, indeed. Well, P2's up. Afro trying to get out. Darn, get out. Scraps there for the three. 35 to go. This might be a perfect 60. Krem cut down again. It's Scrap on a four spree now. Six and two overall. Nasty in the middle of the map. Toast. Perfect awareness up for Scrap. Can he get the, the, the damage? So much pain. So much suffering. No kills. He also has a trophy, doesn't need it. All those like nades and stuns, I think just get ended up like shoved out the back window as well. So the arm strength on the LA player is pretty absurd. And well, maybe more absurdities. They need to hunt Envoy down and they are successful. That is good reads and a big moment to make sure you stabilize this game. You virtually got full 16 on the P2, but sort of a similar situation. Nasty's pushed up in prime position to be the cutoff man right now, slowing these ultra players down. So while he's doing this, that's a free death. He's on point. His teammates now know all guns forward. Of course, somehow they're losing a few of these gunfights and getting out of the time and maybe a slightly painful moment. Ultra putting the pressure on. I mean, damage is one thing. Get the kills is another. Forward you go. Taking care of business on the inside of the tunnel. That's all the members of Ultra away for now. Ghosty pushing the front line forward. Afro driving the spear in. Create some space, create some time. Keep running up that score. There's the lead change. And you see again, Krem, just uh, good information. He's getting even before he falls. That is, again, not quite a full 60, but pretty close to it. So a very strong hill there for Thieves. Of course, though, it is going to be a hike across the map. It is devastating. You really get one good attempt to try to break this sub base or the sub hill down, rather. Right now for Thieves, only one player pushed up on the map. Doesn't get very far. Krent, maybe the next player in line because Insight's going to be looking for him. One good attempt to break the dry dock hill. Good luck. Have fun. One something is all it takes to get the point. And flip them spawns. Good luck when Insight's got the Renetti in hand behind you. I will not be singing any more in today's series. Nasty with a nice two. Going forward, but those spawns, my god, they're very, very close to the hard point. Guns will be at the ready for Ultra, so the approach here from the Thieves, very tough chance. Yeah, very tough indeed. Again, you lose just that first, like, opening salvo of gunfights, and much like a flock of seagulls, you are just so far away. Easy trades there from Ultra. At least Nasty gets the one guy at a time, though, so that is a gunfight that strips away maybe an extra seven or eight seconds, and... If this map goes down to the wire, little moments like that can absolutely pay off. Kleenex doesn't care about fall damage, but he is one kill away from a cruise missile. He wants to play guarantee. There it is. Oh, 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 oh. That trophy's going to help. Unless it's just outside of the effective range. And out the nades there, Envoy steals it. Bye-bye, trophy. Hello to the new hardpoint. He's been kept at bay, and Kleenex still desperate for that cruise. Maneuvering around, but this timing should work out if he turns. He's in a sweet spot. His boys have got control of the hill. Envoy and Insight finding the kills in the feed. Good looks, Ultra. Uh, you just see how easy it is to be Kleenex at this moment. His team is just killing everything. He's waiting for a freebie, but right now it's just too much work being put on the rest of the Toronto Ultra players. Now he's finally forced to back down, but you have Kleenex in a situation. He hasn't taken a gunfight in 45 seconds, and his team is still getting every second of time. I mean, we're at the point where the cruise missile almost doesn't matter. <laughs> Finally, LA Thieves get the break, but yeah, it's a 50-point game. We're staying on Kleenex until he gets the streaks, and if he doesn't, he'll be wildly disappointed. Ah! <laughs> no 
streaks. No problem, though. The Ultras still have the lead. Honestly, dropping for that. How do you not get the cruise <laughs> missile in that moment? It is unreal. Uh, but no, LAT is maybe back to the bread and butter. P1 is a hill. They've had a great deal of success. Scrap, though, doesn't care about that. Just drums right at the point, gets the trophy down. And now in a moment where I think only Ghosty behind enemy lines, maybe to make things awkward. But Kleenex, well, now he shows up in the kill feed. Gets the read, and this is a painful moment right now from LA because they got full 60 on last P2, and they do not have any map control in this rotation. Nope. Here's the hit from Kleenex. Yeah, he's feeling a little confident now that he's not sort of second-guessing decisions. Or his teammates also cleaning everything up either side of him, so it's still a very solid outing from the entirety of the roster. But you walk past Ghosty, you've double-backed on it. Good job, Kleenex. Any more here? Oh, swaps to the Pistola. Doesn't manage to get any more out of it. And Scrap now soaking up the time. Final 10. And just like we saw in the first set, Chance Ultra, the P1 to P2. It's very, very good. Yeah, you can see no one on LAP is able to make the break and get behind enemy lines. Afro, the only player that could have had the opportunity, gets slammed immediately. Ultra keeping everything under control. And if you are in this situation where you have number three insight blocking the spawns and you have Roamer's top glass, I mean, this is hopeless. Yeah, this is absolute devastation. This is prescient gameplay from Toronto Ultra. They are in it. They are living it. Five. Nearly a six now. Oh no, every time you sort of call them out, they're gone. Ultra are flowing. Look at the damage dealt. You're never dealing with one member at a time. You are always being tagged. Oh, Afro, what in the sugar was that? Was that a rival? What attack that was. Yeah, Afro built different, but it, again, you were pointing out correctly, by the way, that was every single kill being team shot, it seemed like, for a near, like, 60-second span outside of maybe Kleenex having one individual fight, like Top Glass. Now you're just jumping into death. Nothing you can do. Insight for three up top, and now they finally flip the spawns at the worst possible time. Ultra, again, playing this map almost flawlessly. Absolutely delightful. Delightful work from Toronto Ultra 25 for the win. It's going to take 25 seconds to get across sub base right now for the LA Thieves. Scrap knows that. He's moving forward. Oh, you've abandoned the hard point for a moment here, lads. Nasty. He knows what's up. Trying to get himself a kill or two in the back line. Nice work. You're in. Go get out of it. Trophy. I've got one of my own. Can in sight now make the approach as the shoe's on the other foot now for the Thieves. It's going to have to pop off and get a big double kill, potentially. Able to deliver the first, but it's the nades and the lack of trophies that are going to cost you towards the end. LA Thieves, though, do fight out of this. They do get that break in a big moment as well. That's the good news. The bad news is you are still down 100 points and you are rotating towards the depths of time where Insight is already posted up, ready to go. So they're going to have to get back-to-back -back breaks in a near impossible situation. Good luck, lads. Here we go. The thieves now trying to find their way forward. Kremp and Afro struggling somewhat. Continuing to struggle. Ghosty will find the trade. We're under the point. Here we go. The cleanup. And once okay. again, it's a late game resurgence. But wait, Dylan Hannon. Oh my word. In and out. Kleenex picks up after the confusion clears, and it's absolute masterful play from Toronto Ultra. The hard point back in their hands. Ghosty down. Scrap finds his. This is the end. Yeah, it's an in and out performance there from Envoy. Maybe a Whataburger on the flip side for some of the LA Thieves. Got taken to task here on sub base. That is an electric performance, and their perfect record maintain Ultra as clean as they could ever be in the respawns. A little bit of anger there in the cams. Extra oh words God. there from Insight. There to let them know. Oh, I'm loving it. That was one way to uh, have to let those boys know how the series went. Ultra getting a little spicy, a little bit feisty. Not terribly Canadian of them, that language. Three to one, though. The series is done. And if not for the search and destroy chance, I mean, LA Thieves, not bad looks in the hard points. They had some fantastic moments of greatness. Hold on, let me finish me bloody point. That control, <laughs> that control was an absolute slamming. That was a, a real ugly one. That was where Ultra, a clear-cut better team. And if not for the double efforts of Nasty in the scoreboard, uh, what? <laughs> Even with two nasties, couldn't quite get it done, though. I mean, yeah, this sub base, I think that is just a moment for, you know, maybe the rest of the league to pay attention to. Yeah. It might have been two months. It might be some new spawns, but Ultra is still completely on point on that map. Quite frankly, as soon as they got the hill on the P4, they ran away with it. That was an absurd performance, and maybe that'll remain the auto veto for many teams in this league when they're playing against Ultra. But I will say the Rio, not a terrible look there from LA Thieves. It was a very slow start for a few 
players that started to bring things back. But again, I'd say for LA, it's a learning experience uh, playing against this team. They've already had a fantastic stage two qualifying stage. They've gotten 40 CDL points. They're starting in the winner's bracket. And now maybe a, a VOD review sesh is going to be due to see what exactly happened when they were playing against Ultra. Because, uh, yeah, they certainly learned today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we all learned today, and I think we learned a lot in the desk that all their predictions were correct and nameless for the S&D call. I mean, the whole guy, everyone picks what? You all picked the, the Toronto boys to win it. We're really, Such a hard yeah, call, man. It was so tough. Yeah, you know, yeah, a major winner that team that was in 12th before stage two. Today, we picked the right team. We look rick wicked smart, and so did Toronto Ultra. I was looking through some of the numbers here. Why did you quit out early? Why didn't you want people to see your five and eighteen Afro? Your nine and nineteen Crimp. Dan Ghosty held to just fifteen kills after a very strong series. Toronto shut them out. Yeah, this was uh, definitely a case of a top team going against somebody who has yet to figure out this game to fight for that top six, top four spot. Toronto Ultra got handed some losses by some of the other top teams in Optic Texas and Atlanta. And now we see them true form up against a team like LA Thieves. Who's got to figure it out? I think a couple players on Thieves was also that will have like a .5 in this series. They, they yeah. literally just got pummeled. And, you know, talking about that control, lightning fast. That was the game mode that we needed to see improvement from from Toronto Ultra. Looks like Karachi's still very strong for them. Uh, Search and Destroy, another one we were looking at for improvement throughout this uh, for Toronto Ultra. Headed into the next stage. They had some good rounds, but in the end, get edged out by Thieves. So still, that's like the game mode I think is in question with their map pool and even their defense. Like, that's what I was talking about headed into the series. Didn't look that much improved. And playing devil's advocate here, though, for the side of Toronto Ultra, their search and destroy seems to still be struggling. Like, they were up when it came to that map, too, and they were in a position to close it out, but it was simply just the efforts of Ghosty and Nasty to start turning up and getting some kills under their belts to just absolutely shut Toronto Ultra down. All right, if I'm looking at this LA Thieves coaching staff, I'm saying, calm your boys down. I look at that post-reaction, Afro Fury is getting up, the rest of the team just looking lost. You need some leadership right now. You need to remind them you have four wins. You're playing in the winner's bracket, and we're going to land next week. 100%. You just ran into a juggernaut. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Like, these guys have had a great stage. They need to recognize that. And, like, individual performance aside, forget all that. You just played the one of the best teams, if not the best team in the game. You have to, learn. Winners, you have to learn from these situations. And for Thieves, I mean, they got a lot to take away. You learn from this guy. It's your scuff play of the game. He goes by the name of Jamie, better known as Insight in game. And, well, he dropped 20 bombs all over the place. His game number one performance, though, is really what set the tone. What was he doing with his AR, Alley? <laughs> he was doing despicable things with the AR on Rio. Typically, it is our SMGs that we see take over this map. I will handedly say Envoy had an incredible series, but Insight, I mean, it was just a win site takeover, 31 and 18. Uh, this guy just could not be killed. Man, that puts them at, what, 8 and 2 and hardpoint throughout this stage. Yep. Rio looks extremely comfortable, and when Insight's dropping 31, you're going to win. So that guy's an absolute beast. And I love the Sith look he's got. Right? <laughs> I think we need to get him on camera one more time. It's our Monster Winner Spotlight. Jamie, welcome to the show live. 51 kills in two hard points, a dominant performance in both of those maps. Talk to me about your guys' strength right now as a team. Where do you think you have an edge over the rest of the competition come Miami? Yeah, I just think it's our respawn right now. We've definitely been putting a lot of work into our respawn, especially hardpoint on the new patch. You know, when it first came out, we were definitely struggling a little bit. So we hammered it down in practice and stuff, and I feel like it's actually showing in matches now. Absolutely, and piggybacking off of that, that is your biggest strength right now. Obviously, the biggest weakness kind of being that search and destroy. So what do you guys plan to do as we head into the major next week to try and tighten that up before land? Yeah, I feel like the biggest thing in our S&D right now is that we're not getting big kills in like clutch situations. Um, we definitely have been trying a few things in S&D, trying to switch up the vibe because everyone has a lot of bob from us in Major 1. Uh, but I feel like the biggest thing for us right now is just knuckling down on that, uh, getting out all the creases and uh, come land, like hopefully we can clutch up. Sure. Uh, Jamie, you know, throughout stage one, there was a clear difference. You guys were on another level, another tier than the rest of the teams. A lot of people say there's a lot of parity in the top four, that anybody could come in in the top four and win this next major. What do you have to say about that? Do you agree with that at this point in time? 
Uh, I do feel like the top four is definitely like leaps and bounds ahead of like the rest of the pack. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but if you just look at like the points difference, I feel like it explains the story itself. Uh, but I do feel like any team on the day in the top four coming into the event can definitely win it. I feel like it will come down to the S and Ds personally, mm -hmm. with how respawn is right now. Um, but yeah, I do feel like there's a big gap right now in the top four. You know, coming off of a loss, I saw you show up today with a new look, had the hood on, you're absolutely dialed. <laughs> is that something like you're about to be doing in matches on land? Chat saying he's a Sith Lord, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Today I was like, you know what? I'm going hoods up. And uh, I don't know, it worked map one and map four, map four. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe I'll keep the look. Love it. Insight chat noticed that you have been increasing the trash talk. Is this something you're learning sitting next to Scrap or has this always been part of your game? Uh, it comes out against certain teams, I'd say. You know, th this one today was for Kami. You know, they did my boy dirty, so I had to get the revenge for him today. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really a toxic guy, to be honest, but, you know, today it came out. <laughs> Love to see it, man. Never stop. Congrats, Toronto, in the top four officially. We'll see where you're seated at the end of the week. Cheers, guys. That's Insight. Toronto Ultra done for a major two qualifiers. Now we're going to see them next week down in Miami. We still get Optic in New York tomorrow night, Allie. And as we recap today, we had a lot of things sorting out in the bottom half of our top eight as well. Yeah, we got Vegas Legion with a handed three over the Carolina Royal Ravens. Kind of snubbing out their hopes of trying to force it into that winner's bracket. Things are still shuffling, though. But for Vegas Legion, heading into the major next week, their respawn has looked incredible. So now they land a top six seed for major two with a five and two record. And I cannot just see what teams they upset at land. Nameless, a nine and one day. It was pretty dominant. But I think the big shocker here was the 3-0 from Minnesota. Minnesota losing to Miami and of course Carolina not able to steal a single map to secure winners bracket. Dude, because this might have been the worst day of predictions ever. <laughs> I lost the first two. I just can't believe how this is shaped up. Miami heretics are in the winners bracket. They were hopeless. <laughs> like they look like not even look like they were the worst team yeah. the first three, four weeks of this stage. And they've turned it around, man. With that 3-0, that 3-0 was absolutely massive. And it was it was against a, a good team in the Minnesota Rockers, so the Miami Heretics, maybe they will be able to do something at their home major. Want to give a big shout out to everyone behind the scenes at Comp Ops over there at Activision. They have multiple tiebreakers set up for us, and we're going to need them looking at these standings. Alley, only one team can end perfect. It's either going to be the Subliners or Optic with the number one seed. Everyone else there, you could kind of end up with a bit of a tie record between Optic and FaZe, and then, of course, everything that could be happening beneath them. Yeah, I'm just so shocked that we're going to have teams make it into the top eight with only two wins under their belt. Boston still has a chance to lock in their top eight. They play Surge tomorrow, who still has a very little chance of breaking in. Remember, though, all 12 teams are going down to Miami, and you can join us live. We want to see you in Florida next week, and all you got to do is scan that QR code, pick up your tickets today, and join us at the Miami Heretics Major 2 Tournament presented by Gamer Chief. I'll be there. I'll also be there. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I'm going there on Tuesday if you guys want to get a drink. Let's take a look at the schedule tomorrow, though. It could be another swift day with Atlanta FaZe taking on the bottom squad, LAG. We got Boston fighting for their life against Seattle in a similar situation, and we close it out with the Monster Energy matchup. Go on Twitter right now. Let me know who you have. Is it Optic with the number one seed, or is it New York Subliners going in with the number one seed? We'll give you our answer tomorrow, 2.45 Eastern. We'll see you then.